Hola! Big Brown Breakdown in full effect. I appreciate the feedback from you guys, too. Not changing the name. Apparently, that was a bad idea. The fans have spoke. You guys were very uh, very strong, opinionated on the, the changing of the name. Would you agree with that, Chin? Big time. <laughs> Big Everyone time. loved Big Brown Big. I even asked you, and you're like, I would keep it, man. I wouldn't mess with it. I would, yeah. That was... That was- I told you, it's in my phone. I, I know. Love it. Sorry, man. I don't know. I was just thinking. New chapter. Big Brown Breakdown. It started with the, my former employer wanted me to break down the fights. Like, what do you want me to call it? I was like, ah, ah, Big Brown Breakdown. Just smooth. So we'll keep it, though. You guys seem to like these things, so we'll keep on keeping on doing them. Um Little groggy last night had a set at the uh, Laugh Factory sold out show man. Shit, how was it, dude? Dude, it was amazing. It was so amazing. It was. Uh, I don't say my performance was amazing. <laughs> I'm saying just the crowd sold out. Toy Drive, Tom Segura, Chris D'Elia, Burt Kreischer, Russell Peters, Piven. Uh, I mean, it's just the, the who's who was there, man. It's just um, I don't know. I love it. I feel super fortunate. Um, I'm at the Hollywood Improv tonight. I've never been there. So I'm always like, when I do these things, I always walk in. I'm the new guy. Mm-hmm. Like at the Laugh Factor, I didn't know where the green room was. And I walked in. I was like, what's up? And they're like, why are you staying back here with the fans? I'm like, I don't know where to go. They're like, go up. St- are you serious? I'm like, yeah, man. I'm the rookie. Help me out here. They're like, go upstairs. Everyone's upstairs. I'm like, my bad. So. Was there people? I'm sure there are a lot of people that couldn't even get in, right? So For sure. did they just turn them away? I <laughs> think so. I yeah, I don't know how they worked that it. Sucks, man. I know, man. It's a bummer. Uh, but all, everyone who came out, love you guys. Appreciate the support. Uh, I just love doing it, man. Yeah, I love doing it tonight at the Hollywood Improv. Tomorrow night, I'm, I think I'm back at the Laugh Factory. The next week on the 27th, I'm at the Comedy Store. I'm just trying to do as much as I can. Awesome. I'm man. obsessed with it. I'm obsessed with it. It's similar to trying to, to people are asking me, especially last night, like how's it like how's it work? Like obviously you're getting laughs. How's that compare to fighting in the octagon? And I said, Well, I've never thrown a jumping running kick off the fence mm-hmm. like Anthony Pettis, but I would assume it's something like that. Because you're like, is this really gonna work? And then you land it, and you're like, Oh, oh but think of doing that just nonstop and you're creating the moves. You know what I'm saying? That's like the best it's gotta be an analogy feeling, I can do. Man. Yeah. So super fortunate. Um, yeah, just keep on keeping on. Let's get into some fight talk, man. There's uh, I, I feel like the big round breakdowns, they're pretty easy to do because in the fight world, especially if you're balls deep in it, I mean, there's something always, always, there's drama always, always going on. Yeah. You're never not going to have something to talk about. So let's jump on into it. And then... Today, the uh, and pff, if you want to argue this point, bring it on because I can freaking we can go toe to toe if you want. We have the best looking fighter of all time <laughs> in the UFC, and you're like, no, Luke Rockhold, this guy, blah blah. blah. Excuse me, excuse me, you Versace model <laughs> contract, Versace model. Game over. We got Alan Joban. Jumping in studio with me, so we'll have a little sit down chat with him. See what's going on in his world, especially after that huge uh, UFC on Fox big win over Mike Perry. He's one of my favorites, man, and uh, I'm excited to have him on. He's really, I mean, Tito was the first guest for the Big Round Breakdown. Mm-hmm. That just kind of worked out, but um, I reached out to Alan Joe Band, and we'll start doing more things like that. Having these guys come in, so uh, let's get to it, though. I'm excited. Let's start off with. Did you know that the Watterson versus Van Zant card was the biggest television audience like in three years for the UFC? Um, I mean, I I I, I knew it was good. Mm-hmm. I think I saw Luke Thomas tweet something about how it was good, but um, the best in three years. I would have to go. Does it say what the last few were? Because they've really watered down those Fox cards. And if you yeah. if you look at this card. You know, people say, how, how, how can you say that Paige versus Michelle Watterson wasn't the right call? Look at the ratings. Yep. Okay. And to your point, that's fine. But now we're in the business of entertainment. So 
I can guarantee you CM Punk will fight again. He'll probably be on a Fox card because they're they're dying for these ratings. So um, when you see Paige versus Michelle Watterson as your main event, Michelle Watterson has every right to be there. Every right. Talking about former world champ, Adam Waite champ, at Invicta. She's been fighting forever. Blah, blah, blah. Has the skills. Um, so she deserves that. We knew Paige was going to be a draw because Dancing with the Stars. That was huge. People are pretty familiar with her. That's a regular fan base that typically wouldn't watch a UFC event. But it's free. on, And I don't think she was a big enough draw where if, she's a, if they put out a main event on pay-per-view, that's not selling. Those same fans aren't going to translate. Amer- uh, Dancing with Star fans aren't going to translate to pay-per-view buys. What they're going to do is tune in if it's free on Fox, which is what I think we saw here. Yeah. Bummer about that is, big bummer about that is, if the girl, the fighter you have is the main event in her hometown, isn't ready for that level of competition, well, now those Dancing with Stars fan viewership goes, oh, yeah, no, she's really not that good. I you didn't know? Even think about that. Think about it. They go, oh, shit, yeah, she's just a dancer or she's just a pretty girl. So it does her a disservice because I doubt they're going to tune back into the next one. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. She got murked in the first round. Like, they're like, oh my God, it wasn't even a fight. She did nothing. She got choked out. And my heart goes out to, to Paige Van Zandt because it's not her fault. It's really not. She's the complete package. And the UFC is dying to have another Ronda Rousey at 115 pounds. They're dying for it. She has the looks. She has the tenacity. She has, and I hate this word, toughness. You know what? Every time, here's a rule on Big Brown Breakdowns. Every time I say tough to describe a fighter, let's put twenty dollars in the jar. Every time I say blah 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 to you know to carry on because I don't want to finish my sentence, twenty dollars in the jar. Will I'm you hold it. me to that? I'm on it. Tough, blah blah blah, twenty dollars. <laughs> wow. God damn Where's it. Where's that money go though? Yeah, uh, you keep it, Chen. All right, we'll, we'll figure out charity, something to do yeah. with it. Charity, something. Charity or uh, we'll figure out something to do with it. But uh, for Paige, I just feel bad for her. And I, I was having a, a discussion with my uh, buddy yesterday, who's a uh, he's a casual fan, uh, celebrity. I won't say his name because he probably doesn't want to get out. And he just goes, God, I, I want to reach out to her. I, I want to reach out to her because there's so much pressure on her. And it was in her hometown. And, and he, like I said, he's a casual fan. He goes, you can tell like she's just not at that level. She just gets destroyed. And I, you know, I didn't give him any bias opinions or anything like that. He was just asking about the card. And uh, he goes, I just, you know, I just want to tell her, like, keep going. You can do this. She just needs time. She just needs yeah. time. It's, it's not her fault. There's not, there's not one fighter in the UFC or in the world who wouldn't want that recognition that Paige is getting. There, you think it's her fault or Sage Northcutt's fault that they're getting all this publicity and, they're, and she, she, you know, she has this huge Reebok deal? No, no one would say, no, I, I don't want that. No, don't pay me that much money. I don't deserve that. No one. No one. Yeah. So for Paige, she just has work to do. And, and I know people very close to the camp, and even they're like, yeah, man, she just, you know? And remember, Michelle Watterson is coming off 18-month layoff, full-time mom, another side job. You know, like she, she had to make ends meet. So... If her husband was doing all the work, I think. Yeah, her husband. Like, yeah. So I think, you know, Michelle, all she cares about is fighting. For Paige, and this is the problem we're running into. You know, it's not the problem we're running into. It's starting to. It's going to be the problem we're running into. WME owns the UFC now. WME's power is entertainment. So they're going to do whatever it takes to build the biggest stars possible. So you're going to see... I guarantee you see more fighters on Dance with Stars. You're going to see more fighters in TV shows, movies, uh, sponsors, acting, blah, blah, blah. Well, what's that do? It's a, it's a, it's a balance because would you, do you guys want to watch 500 Paige Van Ants? You know what I'm saying? Where you're like, God, where's the skill, man? You know? Yeah. But they're these huge stars. So where's this stuff? Hey, I heard Brad Pitt likes this, the scuffle. Do we sign him? Because he's this huge star but with no skills. I'm not saying Paige has no skills. What I'm saying is Paige, she has the framework. She has the look. She speaks well. And she has the tenacity to be a world champ. 
But it, it's it's like taking a a pro boxer who's four and zero and going here. Here's Floyd Mayweather. Like Jesus on HBO. Yeah. God damn. Like let's give some warm ups. Sorry, man. You're a draw. You're a draw because people know you from blah blah. At it because people know you from whatever. <laughs> You're a celebrity from whatever. So here, you know. Yeah. So I think it's gonna be a tough balance for people. Um, to to play this game of entertainment, building my brand, and come into fighting because the game is evolving so fast. If you're not 100 percent in, you can get Ronda Rousey. By when I mean Ronda Rousey, I mean kicked in the face, and that's your wake up call. Going, this ain't a game. This is not like the other sports. There's no off season. You cannot shoot movies. Do this. Think you're God's gift to the world. This is what happens. Eh, douche. You know what I'm saying? Like the, and when people go, you know, life's going to kick you in the face. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Mm -hmm. No, that's what happens. Life is going to take your back and choke you out. Mm -hmm. Because while you're doing Dance with the Stars, she's in the gym. While you're shooting Expendables 19, Holly Holmes in the gym. While you're shooting... Uh, Fast and Furious 7, you know, Bisbee shooting Fast and Furious, Luke Rockhold's in the gym. You say, well, look at that. I get that. Let's see what happens when those guys fight again. But there's going to be there, this kind of shift in momentum. It's going to be the manager's job, and it's just another another issue for the fighters who have, who have to take this on because it's such a new sport, and they're trying to fit union, association. Okay, we got that sponsorship. All right, well, Reebok came, so we got to figure that out. WME buys us. Okay, well, now I have all these opportunities. Okay, but I'm fighting this killer, you know? Yeah. So it's it's just going to be a balancing act. And I think for for Paige, it's just nothing changes. Everyone still loves her. I mean, how can you not love that girl? She has the right attitude. She's not cocky. She's one of the very few now that uh, Misha Tate has retired. And I thought Misha Tate was the, the poster girl for this. Paige Van Ant is one of the very few who, if you have a daughter, you can go, that's a role model. Be like her. She's not mean. She's not dark spirited. She's just there for the competition. She's a good person. She's like to compete. She even contacted Watterson after congratulating her on the win too. Sweetheart. How can you not like that girl? Yeah. And, and, and her future is so huge. Just by no means ruins her career or anything like that. She's, she's young. There's the division is not that deep. Dancing with the Stars. I'm sure she has other stuff going on. Let me ask you this, Jen, and, and this is for the listeners too. If someone came to you and you're and you're you're in the business of getting punched in the face, it's just I don't care how good you are, you can get punched in the face when you fight. Someone says, "All right, I know you're getting punched in the face. What if you came over here and did this? Take a little break from that, and I'm going to give you six times the amount of money as you're getting of course, paid." Yeah, you know, you got to do it. So. How how many NFL players do you see in movies? Not many. Not many. How many NBA players do you see in movies? Not many. Not many. See LeBron James in Trainwreck. He's the I saw it. Whatever. And I <laughs> yeah. love that movie. And yeah. His acting was all right in it. Uh, so you got how, how many uh, Major League Baseball players do you see in movies? I don't know. Why do you think that is? You want to take a guess? <laughs> because they're concentrating on their sport. They're concentrating on their sport and because the competition level is so high, someone will take your spot. Yeah. You know why else? Why else? Because they don't need the money. That is very true. Didn't even think about that. They, go go ahead and go ahead and offer um, a guy like uh, uh, you know Russell Westbrook a movie deal right now at the end of the season. What? Yeah. Go offer Kevin uh, Durant a movie deal. Let me know how that goes for you. They they might do a small appearance here. They're not the lead. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Go go ask. Um, Go ask Tom Brady to do Dance on the Stars after the season. Let me know how it goes it's for not you. Not going to happen, right? But these fighters are starving for notoriety, money, a way out. You know. Yeah. Now you're going to have your few fighters who just they love the fight, they they love everything about it, and they don't care about that stuff. But in general, it's just human nature. Go, damn! I can do that, and I get punched in the face, and I make that much money. I, I mean, I'll do it. And, and what you don't realize is it's taking you out of the gym. You're not you're not practicing your craft, 
And that guy you're fighting against, he's in there 24 seven. All he cares about is beating you. All you care about is memorizing these lines and finishing the scene. It's going to catch up with you. And like I said, people go, life's going to kick you in the face. It will. Yeah. In this, in this sport, it physically does and it changes your life. So, um, Paige is one of those those girls who's, who's going to have to find that balance. Now, she might be like, you know what? I, I don't really care about we, being world champ. Like, imagine her versus Joanna right now. What the fuck are we talking Scary, about? Man. That's not happening. Do not do that to her. So, um, I, you know, if I'm her manager, I, you know, be in the gym. But if you have this opportunity to be, um, you know, in the next whatever movie, name a movie, in the next notebook. The next uh, fucking, uh, you know, the Bad Boys 3, 4, I would probably take it if I'm her. Yeah. Now, if I'm, um, you know, one of these other, the, the you know, Khabib or uh, some of these other guys, here, here's an example, then we'll move on. Mm-hmm. And I know this for a fact. How many offers do you think Conor McGregor's gotten to do movies and TV? Shit load. How many movies and TV has he done? I don't know of one. Not one. Yeah. Why do you think that is? <laughs> he's he's making you... enough money, and he's concentrating on his sports. He'd not get anyone. He's, he's striving for greatness. Yeah. It's, it's so no How many asks. movies did Floyd Mayweather do when he was on his run? Just like, give me one fucking movie. <laughs> do you see the point here? Yeah, I got it. It's, you just can't. It, it, it'd be the equivalent of Hussein Bolt shooting a movie while he's getting ready for the Olympics once every four years. That's how big the UFC fights are. But it's so competitive now. Everyone's all in, you know? Yeah. So yeah, I wish her the fun. best, though. But as far as the ratings, okay. So, you know, so, so it, did, it did well. But you, you look at uh, some of these, these Fox cards and no shit, man. No shit. Yeah, yeah, it did well. Uh, I mean, Paige is a star. It, it doesn't surprise me. But... Uh, you know, you have your co-main event is Mickey Gall and Stage Northcutt. I love both guys. They have no business being a co-main event. Again, we'll tune in, though, because we know Mickey Gall because he submitted CM Punk. Sage, they've been trying to freaking, they force it. God, do they force him on us. I love the kid. Great look for a UFC fighter. He is very athletic. He has so far to go. He has so far to go, and it's it's really a kick in the face of a lot of guys who have been grinding and putting their time in, and they're on these win streaks, and he's making 60 and 60. That's not Sage's fault either. I, I wish he got paid more. Yeah. But for these other guys, you know, you can see how they're upset. And remember, when these dogs, when these freaking true lion heart fighters see these people getting these opportunities that they're not getting – they're chopping at the bit to fight you. And all they can think about is you while you're on set or while you're freaking, uh, you know, doing a, a dance competition or while, you know, while you're shooting some cool video in a bees or whatever the hell you're at. These guys are in the gym thinking about you, thinking about you. Yeah. So it's what you sign up for. And with WME, it, it, we're going down a weird, weird road. It's going to take a weird. lot. Yeah. But to your point, when you're saying that when they finally get to a point, like say those guys that are, that are hungry, just working in the gym to beat these guys, once they get to that point, then that's when they start getting that stardom and they might stop stop evolving too, right? And then someone's going to come yep. up. So the game, the fight game actually doesn't evolve as much as it the should. The quality's going to get, yeah. get watered down. It makes total sense. And this is the other thing. These stars, because the reason why Vince McMahon of the uh, WWE Never bought the UFC. The UFC offered him to buy it. The reason why he never bought it is because he goes, I can't control the stars. Yeah. In my business, I can control the storyline, I can control the stars. I can't in yours. It doesn't make sense. So the, what the UFC has to do is when they build these stars, they have to protect them in this bubble. They, they really, they're gonna, there's going to have to be the right matchups. And for people who are educated on the sport, you see it a mile away. You really do. You really do. And sometimes they... They over, uh, they're, they're overconfident in that person's skills as a star. So we, we see what happens, but that's the fight business. What else you got, brother? 
I'm Let's glad. See. I'm glad it did well. You know, yeah. you, you want them. You want it to do well. They said if it was even longer, it would have been done even more too. Yeah, the longer that that main event goes, the the better it is, right? Because more people tune it was in. Pretty short. Yeah. Cool. I prefer it to be shorter for sure. <laughs> I hear you. So, did you hear that? Gegard Mikasi. Oh, sorry. Gegard Mikasi called out Chris Weidman. Mm. And uh, so he tweeted out. Uh, UFC, at UFC offered you the fight days ago, Chris Weidman. Suddenly you have disappeared. Accept the fight already. I'm waiting, pal. <laughs> hashtag don't be scared. All right, well, you can't have pal and hashtag don't be scared. And then he put, I am working to get the belt. If the top guys won't accept, I am prepared to take volunteers. And he's uber thirsty for a fight. Yeah. And I get it. And he's a guy who's kind of been under the – kind of the the limelight forever and he's been fighting forever so he's like he's hungry he wants to get something going all right here's chris weidman's response easy pal i'm I'm doing this in chris weidman's voice or this is how i think he's saying this easy pal you're just one of the few names given by the ufc and i'm still healing up glad you're finally speaking though I mean, I'm with him. It's like, cool, man. It's about time you, you know, he's the quiet mouse with all these skills. It's about time he said something. But I'm sure they offered Chris Weidman a bunch of fights. Um, yeah, that's a fun fight. That's a great fight. It's a, uh, it's a hell of a matchup. Um, I don't know if Weidman's favorite in that fight. Yeah, After his last of, few performances, honestly. I would assume that even money, or he might be a little, um, he might be a tad bit of an underdog. But for for um, Musasi, scroll down a little bit. Uh, f- you know, I wouldn't mind Musasi. Th- this is my fight for Musasi, mm-hmm. and, and and I like it for this guy too. And he's one of my favorites to watch. Musasi Whitt- Whitaker. He called him out too. Whitaker called him out, right? Oh no, uh, Musasi was like Whitaker. You know, he's he's challenging Whitaker too. Oh really? He just wants to fight. Yeah. Did Whitaker say anything? I don't think he replied yet. He, the, the only fights Musasi's going to get is Whitaker or. Uh, uh, Weidman, but if Weidman's healing up, then I assume it's Whitaker. I don't know what, what his health is like right now, but Whitaker versus Musasi is a fun yeah, fight. That sounds awesome. That's a really fun fight. Um, y- again, you're, uh, when we talk about the UFC turn more to entertainment, imagine a guy, a Musasi has always been the quiet, skilled, silent assassin, stone cold killer. He doesn't even look like he wants to be there. He <laughs> yeah. almost looks like he's bothered you even watching him perform. Yep. Now you got this guy going on social media calling guys out. Yeah. It's not your thing, man. But that's what you have to do. If you're that type of personality where you're an introvert and that's not your thing, you almost got to hire someone to run your social media. You would almost have to, and it's not a bad business if you're a management company, to create, to have these young guys who have a, a beat, their ear to the ground, and they know the game, and they're they're good at social media. They're good at uh, I don't say shit talking, but they're good at hyping fights. Like they they know what the fans want to see. Yeah. It's not a bad idea to hire those guys to to run these uh, accounts. Does he seem like his, he comes off like fake at all, Masasi? No, like but it, but if you know Masasi, like if you know his background, just like man, that's the state of the yeah. game right now. Like yeah. you have to do that in order to get a fight. You just simply have to do that. So I hope he gets something because he deserves it. He's he's one of the he's one of the guys you root for. How can he not? He's been doing it too long. <laughs> what else you got, brother? Speaking of root for, um, you heard about Mark Hunt and talking about the terms of his next fights, what he wants people to do. So he wants a clause in his con tell me if yeah. this is correct, Jen. Mm-hmm. He wants a clause in his contract that says He'll fight. So he's accepted all fights. They offered him, uh, let me think, they offered him Anthony Johnson. They offered him Alistair Overeem. How hilarious is it? And, and then I'll continue my point. How mm-hmm. hilarious is it? He fights Brock Lesnar, notorious PED user. We all knew he was on shit. It's so sketchy. Sketchiest deal in UFC history. He gets fined $250,000, makes $20 gigillion, and just like, cool, see, I'm going back to WWE. And then they go, my bat, Mark, my bat. Uh, here's Alistair Overeem. Can we not get a steroid guy out of all the guys at UFC? Was that the smartest business choice? You got a guy who's pissed that he's fighting guys who are on uh, PEDs, and then you give him Mr. PED? <laughs> who, whose idea was that? I have no idea. Of course he's going to piss him off. And 
what he wants, he's accepted all these fights. Well, yeah. one thing we all know, if if you know anything about Mark Hunt, he is not scared of any human being walking this earth, and I assume any animal or alien. It's Mark Hunt. Like, you know what I'm saying? It's Mark freaking Hunt. So he goes, I need a clause in my contract that says if these guys fail the steroid test, mm-hmm. that he gets all their purse. Sounds perfectly fair. Honest. What's wrong with that? I know. I'll tell you what's scary. UFC's going no. Yeah, I know. How weird is that? <laughs> How I don't get why why if if you and I fight Chin in a UFC sanctioned match and you're juiced to the gills mm-hmm. and you beat me, obviously that those PEDs helped you. That's very Shooting. obviously it helped Brock Lesnar. Anyone yeah. doesn't think so is fucking batshit crazy. You beat me on PEDs, I get half my pay. You still get a truckload of money. Mm-hmm. And then that fine goes to the commission. What about me? What about Mark Hunt? Where does Mark Hunt benefit in this besides getting mollywop by a juice to the gills gorilla Brock Lesnar? And you and again, it's it's affecting his 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 makeup of his body. It's it's affecting every bit, every cell in his body. Talking about for his brain, CTE. You're talking about it's hard on his joints. He can slam to the mat. You're taking years off his life, and what's he get for it? Half his pay. And and then Brock Brock Lesnar just rides off to the sunset. Why isn't there a bigger penalty, or why isn't there more of a benefit if I fight a PED user? Okay, so it turns into no contest. Brock still made twenty million. What about Mark Hunt? What about the fighters who are risking their lives? To fight this juiced up gorilla. You're fighting Bane from Batman Returns. You're fighting Bane. They push that button. That fucking yellow mutant ooze goes into their body. And then I got to fight the guy. Where's my ooze? Sorry, man. And you're getting half your pay if you lose that guy. And he gets his full pay. It's crazy. He's going to get fined, but he gets his full pay still. So what, what, what bothers me about this is Mark has every right to be like, dude. Just put this clause in. What's wrong with that? And this goes back to having someone to represent you, association, union, whatever you want to do. They would have probably gotten that done. But Mark's 100% right. He goes, what kind of example are we setting for kids that want to be the next you know, champ, DC, Kane? To get to this level, you need to take steroids? And, and, and he's right. He's right. What kind of message is it sending? Give me one reason not to take steroids. There's none at this point. I mean, if, I'm if you're if you're Mark Hunt if you're a superstar, if you're point. a superstar, yeah, I don't see why you wouldn't. No one really cares. That's, did that's did it hurt Brock Lesnar's brand? No, that's crazy. It didn't. <laughs> I mean, is it going to hurt uh, John Jones? Nope. Did it hurt Alex Rowroom? He just fought for a title. Name a guy who it's really affected. Chael Sonny got spent for three years. Think about his career before that, though, mm-hmm. on PEDs. Think about Braun in the Major League Baseball. MVP, $160 million contract, test positive for steroids, threw everyone another bus, still kept that money. You know where his spe- suspension was? Ibiza. I'd love to hear that. If, if my son, when he's 15 years old, go, Dad, uh, can you give me one reason not to take steroids? I'm like, well, I mean, I, there's health concerns. I can come up with that. Even those are typically bad examples. But as far as getting paid, I don't have an argument, son. Wow. You're going to make bank. He goes, yeah, I want to make bank, bro. <laughs> well, don't call me bro. But I see your reasoning. What else you got? I hope, I hope they figure out. Because what Mark Hunt's going to do is he's going to sue the UFC. If because they don't this. figure this out, yeah. he's going to sue the UFC. There's going to be a lawsuit. Hey, WME. Know what you're getting into before you buy it. Because now you got the Fighter Association, you have this lawsuit with Mark Hunt, and he has every right. Because when they look into this Brock Lesnar deal, they're like, hold on. I know you needed ratings, but you took this guy out of the WWE, you gave him an exemption so he didn't have to follow the same testing as everyone else, and you knew he was going to fail, and you still had him fight this Mark Hunt character. And they go, yeah, but we got the ratings. What the fuck? That is some dark shit. 
That's assault, brother. I mean, <laughs> you can't do that. It's crazy. And Mark has every right to sue them. If I'm the UFC, again, put get, get rid of your egos, guys. Get rid of those egos. Go, all right, Mark, we'll put that in, but now you got to put it in every contract because you can't just make an exemption. What's wrong with having that in every contract? Why not, why not give Mark Hunt 25% of Brock Lesnar's purse? Do you guys not have enough money? What else do you need? I just you just you're hurting you're hurting your brand. You just again, there's these little ripple effects. It, it, there's these you're the Titanic, and this is another. It's just a little nick on the boat before that motherfucker hits that glacier. And that glacier is coming, man. Yeah. You got they they ignore these little cracks. Boom, Mark Hunt. Boom, exception here. Boom, Fighters Association. Boom, Reebok deal. And they're just like, uh, put it, yep, keep going. Keep going. We're driving through the night, man. Yeah, but we got cracks. Ah, those will go away. How, well, who's fixing them? No one. It's just people, they, the fighters, you know, they're not going to say shit. They have to fight. Really? But there's, those cracks are still there. We can see them. I know, man. But don't worry about it. Well, who's going to patch it up? No one. That's the best thing. We just keep going. But those cracks are eventually going to go, and you got a bigger deal on your hand. Yeah. But, the, you know, when you have the ego that the Titanic can't sink, it's unsinkable. Then it sinks. Mm-hmm. Eventually. Yeah. All right, brother, what else you got? Okay, now that we're on that same note with him getting beat up by Brock and suffering injuries, um, did you hear about John Kavanaugh, his his thing for 2017 and his fighters? No, I love the guy, though. What do you say? He's going to get them uh, preemptive brain scans, and if any of them show any kind of CTE... He won't let them represent uh, his team, SGB, for 2017. That seems like a really cool thing to do. That's pretty cool. Scary, too, though. It's all fun and games until Conor McGregor gets his brain scanned and there's exactly. something comes up. Then so he what goes, happens then? Well, well <laughs> not this year, okay? We're going to start it. No, I'm just kidding. But I guarantee uh, he, he would not tell uh, Conor to sit. Although Con- I could see Conor doing that because he's a smart dude and he has a huge future in whatever the hell he wants to do. Um, I like it. I, I think it's a, a huge step in the right direction. I wish every gym would do that. Um, you know, you're going to need to give the, you, you're going to have to have those brain scans, uh, once a year. I think at the end of the year, you'd have to do that. Just see where everyone's at. Again, the, the more, the more we know, the more information we have, the, the more likely you're going to prevent this stuff. Cause if a guy is starting to show signs, you go, dude, you got to find something else to do. And he goes, Oh, thank God. I, we caught that. You know? It's That's the only thing you really can do. Yeah. Uh, you know, the w- CT, we don't know much about it. They don't know how to stop it. The only time we can really see the effects of CT is uh, when the person's dead. Yeah. So um, I, I love the move. I love the move. Ho- hopefully more gyms follow this. W- why it's not a requirement, why the UFC doesn't pay every gym to do this, I have no idea. Why not protect your investment? And your investment would be the fighters? No idea. If that happened, like, during your run, if that happened and you're doing, you're doing a great run, I mean, I'm just asking you personally. Yeah. And you're on a great run, and then you got the scan, and you found out there was some stuff. Mm-hmm. W- would that stop you? Would you continue if you're on, a, a, like, a good run? You're talking about Big Brown now where I'm doing stand-up, I got my show I'm and stuff? About, or you're talking back in the day when I didn't have shit but fighting? Yeah. I'd probably keep going. That's unfortunately scary, yeah. Unfortunately, because we haven't we haven't seen a UFC fighter because the sport's so new suffer from it really yet. You re- you know like you know how um, there's been domestic violence in the NFL and in major leagues before, and we hear about it and they're like, yeah, he, he punches uh, pregnant lady in the stomach, then punched the his girl in the face and got suspended. We're like. Damn, that's crazy, man. It's a terrible person. But then you see video of Ray Rice, or you see video of that Oklahoma receiver knocking out that white girl, just, I mean, cold cocking her. And the way our brains are built, visually, we go, oh, my God. I'm never going to watch that guy play football again. Mm-hmm. It's the same thing. It's just in our, in, in this, the, it's in our DNA where when you hear about it, you're like, God, that's terrible. That ain't, that's never happened to me. You know, I'm, what are you talking about? Name a UFC guy who we've seen. Now, I, I can name some older fighters, which I won't, who I can see signs of it. And 
I'm sure you guys, the guys who slur their words and blah, blah, blah. But until it really affects you, it's not, you know, you're just like, ah, what's the worst going to happen? Okay, so my memory, I forget where my keys are and shit. That's not a big deal. Yeah, I'm, I'm two fights away from a title shot. Yeah, I got to keep going, man. I got to, I have no other way to make money. I have to do this. But I guarantee you, if your close friend and training partner is drooling out of his mouth, shitting his pants, and doesn't know where he's at, you're like, oh my God, I don't want that. Yeah. But until it affects the fighters personally, until we can actually see in person what it's like, people really aren't going to take notice, which is a shame. But that's the way we're we're wired. Scary. It is scary. What else you got, brother? All right. Tony and Khabib. Khabib hit up Tony on in, oh, not Instagram, Twitter, saying, like, uh, the fans are asking for the fight. He wants him to sign. Like, the fight's out there for Tony to sign. But then Tony came back saying, like, Dude, you must have been paid a lot of money. Like he's he's complaining that the money is not enough right now, and that's why he's not signing. Mm -hmm. At least that's what I'm getting from the story. Mm -hmm. So Khabib Nurmagomedov put at Tony Ferguson XD fans asking for this fight. It's the best thing can happen. Obviously, his English isn't great, about as good as mine. Uh, it's the it's best it's best thing can happen in the lightweight division today. Stop hiding, accept the challenge, be a man. Hashtag UFC 209. Is that Brooklyn? I think it's, no, 28's Brooklyn, I think. Mm. So I'm not sure what 209 is. Um, and then Tony Ferguson put, at Dana White, must have paid you good with your new deal. You're being fairly paid. Now it's my turn. I want this fight, but won't take peanuts. Um, it, again, Tony Ferguson has every right. Because you fight a guy like Khabib, it's a huge fight. What happens to Tony if he loses that fight? That's a toss-up fight. It's a tough challenge for Tony, you know, it's, it's, it's by far his toughest fight to date. So what happens? I, I love how on UFC 209 official fight card, Overeem versus Mark Hunt. No. <laughs> why, why would anyone confirm that? It's in Anaheim, California. Why would anyone confirm that? It's weird, man. Where, where are you seeing this? Ona says August 5th, range scale 209. Uh, oh, it's supposed to be in Brooklyn. Right now it's saying it's going to be in Vegas. Yeah, okay. On March 4th. Um, I mean, yeah, Alistair Overy and Mark Hunt aren't on that fight. We, I mean, if you listen to our last event, obviously Mark needs some changes to contract before he does that. Um, but back to uh, Tony. Yeah, he, yeah. he has a great point. And what's he won? Nine in a row? Ten in a row? It's got to be. Nine now, right? You, or it you, might I, even be ten. How can you not pay that guy? I thought it was. I thought ten was uh, Dos Anjos. How can you not pay him? Why in the world would you not pay that guy? I have no idea. It's nine. Last loss is Michael Johnson, um, which was a decision. Jesus. But yeah, I have no idea how much they're trying to pay him. But you, you very rarely get. On negotiating chips in your corner. It's very rare in the UFC. Tony has that right now. Nine f nine fight winning streak. Streak just beat Dos Anjos. They want him to fight this monster in Khabib. Conor McGregor's not fighting anytime soon. They need this fight to happen. Name another good fight at 55 for Khabib. This is the only fight everyone wants to see at 55. It's going to be the, whoever, probably maybe the next interim champ or gets the next shot at Conor McGregor. It, the magnitude of this fight is huge. Yeah. So they have to make it. And Tony's going, I'm down to do it, but this is business. And I love seeing that because, you know, I used to train with Tony at Rain. He was always a guy, I don't give a sh I don't care about that stuff. I'm a fighter. I don't care about this stuff. I get it, man. You have a long career. You deserve way more than what you're getting. Know your worth. And someone in this corner is going, we have a little bit of negotiating power. Let's flex a little bit. I guarantee they're going to do something for you. They might not, uh, you know, give you Brock Lesnar money, but you, you're going to get at least a portion of what you're worth. They're, they got to do something. They have to. So I hope it works out for them. That's the only fight I want to see too. The Between only both fight. of them. Yeah, it's the only fight there is to make. So that's a good. That's a good thing for him. Then. Mm -hmm. Like I said, it's very, very rare you have the chips in your in your corner. So you got to flex when you got it. What else you got? <laughs> chin, chin. This is going back to the whole fighters union thing, but it's it's cool to see your IFA were talk about it. 
he said he's interested in actually the fighters organizing, but not necessarily with the fighter unions because he was like, there's three of them. That's not even, what is that doing? That's not even a union, you know? And he said, if anything, he wants to work with the UFC instead and then, you know, work as like a, a liaison to the fighters. The only problem with that is, let's say the UFC hires Uriah Faber. Mm -hmm. He's do he's an employee of the UFC. He's doing what's best in the interest of the business of, of UFC. Yeah, and there's no bigger company man than Uriah Faber. I fucking love Uriah. <laughs> Uriah is balls deep in Dana's pocket. He's the he, he, uh, he, again, he's on my Mount Rushmore. I know I have a 20-man Mount Rushmore. I get it. <laughs> and he's on there. Um, but you you can't have a guy like that as uh, the face of the association or uh, the union. You, you simply can't. Because you have a guy who's pro-UFC, which is fine. You don't have to be anti-UFC. But you can't be so closely tied where Dana White, the owner – of the organization that we're trying to get changes done can influence your th way of thinking. Yeah. That doesn't work. How the hell would that work? What are you talking about? That just doesn't work. Uh, so you're going to have your eye favor and Ronda Rousey as the ones negotiating the association contract, the deals, the two closest people with the organization. The f <laughs> what are we talking about, man? That's crazy. Yeah. That's insane. You can't have that. So, um, I mean, you might as well have the Fertitas negotiating with Dana White for the, you know, it's like they're all friends. Mm -hmm. You can't have that. Your ride's a smart guy and a great businessman and phenomenal fighter. He's a Hall of Famer legend, but uh, he, he, he's too involved with the UFC to be a representative. He Makes just is. Sense. Yeah. He just is. Smart guy. Has a, I'm sure he has great ideas. Uh, Keep scrolling down. Always oh, talks about Bjorn, Bjorn here too. Yeah, and I had a conversation with, the, with some of the head guys at the association the other day. I went, I'll tell you this, and you know, I'm always up front with you guys, and when I talked to them, I said, y you guys are off on the wrong foot because you, you have Bjorn as the, the head of your association right now. If he's going to be involved, because he is one of the only one of six promoters in the world who have done this, and he knows behind the scenes, and he knows the the negotiating deals uh, with promotions and fighters, blah, blah, blah. Add it to the thing. He knows the uh, deal with all that stuff. He has to be a silent partner. He doesn't have the respect of the fighters. No one is following that guy into a foxhole. He's not. You guys fucked up. And that was my number one concern when I spoke with the guys at the association. You have one. You have one chance to make an impression. You had Bjorn speaking for you guys very loud, and and he sounds like a bitter ex. Yeah. And then you have a picture of these five guys in t-shirts, and you have Don Cerrone who flipped, yeah, right like this. So they got some work to do, and I, you know I told him I'm down to help, but you, you just gotta. You you got to come correct, man. You have one shot to make a first impression. Now now you're playing catch up. Now you got the union making fun of you. You got Dana White making fun of you. You got Bjorn going silent now. Yeah, he is, huh? Yeah. But uh, to have a guy like Uri, he he's two balls deep uh, ingrained with the UFC to make it to change. You can't. His interest would not be of the fighters, be more of the brand of the UFC. Yeah, it makes love the guys. What else you got? You want to jump around a little bit? Sure, yeah. man. <laughs> sure, man. Let's jump on around. Right. This isn't a UFC podcast. Yeah. So, Ryzen, did you hear that Mirko Krokop, your old boy, yeah. is fighting King Mo? Damn, that's a fun fight. I love Crazy. King Mo. I just watched King Mo fight uh, Ishii. Uh, very boring fight. Ishii, not the funnest fighter to watch. He was a training partner of mine for four years. Monster. He just doesn't pull the trigger. He's fought the who's who. Uh, the UFC won't sign for that reason just because he's he's a very boring fighter. He'll get position and he will hold it. So not worry about booze or anything. He's a killer, man. He has a great chin. He just doesn't take risk. I don't know why. Uh, so that King Mo fight in Bellator, I was watching it, was the main event. I think it was in Ireland. Uh, King Mo looked great. T took Ishii down left and right, uh, but 
King Mo was frustrated because Ishii wouldn't engage. The crowd was booing a little bit. To have an Irish crowd boo you is tough because they love anything fighting. Mm-hmm. Mirko Krokop, uh, King Mo, that's a uh, that's a uh, a rough uh, day in the office for both gentlemen. That's a weird one, right? I I don't even know who to to pick on that one. I mean, you can never it's Kr- Mirko Krokop. You never count him out. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then. You know, King, I haven't seen Krokop fight in a while. I know he's been doing pretty well, but, I mean, we don't know what kind of Krokop we're seeing. And then uh, King Mo's best chance to win is, uh, you know, obviously getting takedown stuff like that. But, you know, remember Krokop versus Gonzaga when Gonzaga took him down with those elbows? So he has those world-class elbows off his back. You know, King Mo's not a submission artist by any means. Krokop has great uh, jiu-jitsu defense, so he's not going to get submitted down there. He's getting better off his back. Great takedown defense. So you, I assume the edge is with Crow Top, Crow Cop, as far as technique and and uh, stand up, because that's what's going to come down to. Him. But as far as power, King Mo, he has power. He just has to land. But it's tough to land on a guy like Crow Cop. It really is. Um, yeah, and then Shane Carwin's out, which is yeah. a bummer. Wanda Silva out. Do we know why Shane's out? Has there been any word? I didn't see anything. Probably just text him. I'll text <laughs> him right now. Find out right now. Yeah, let me let me text him. Why the hell is he out? Maybe we'll find by the time the show's over. It's a bummer. Um, let's see. Uh, hey, why are you out of the fight? Did you die? But did you die? Um. So let's see what Shano says there. Uh, I was excited for that. Shane and Shane was fighting some monster man. Um, uh, Mike Swick would tag me on the because he's training at AK Thailand, and you know obviously Mike Swick's out there. I think he owns it, and he's training the guy Shane was fighting. I've never seen this guy. He's a monster. He's an Afghanistan monster. He's a giant. I think he wrestled in the Olympics. They were showing him hitting mitts. I was like, ugh, you can keep that. Him versus Shane Carlin would be gnarly. I was pretty excited for that. And Wanderley still was out. So Ryzen's fun, though. You know, it's a bit of a shit show. It's a bit of, you know, it's a bit of a spectacle. But yeah. you can't hate on that. If you're going to hate on, you know, if if, if you're not going to hate on the UFC putting entertainment before skills, you sure as hell can't hate on Ryzen or Bellator, you know, going for ratings as well. Because think think of the skill set of Crow Cop versus King Mo compared to Sage Northcut versus Mickey Gall on Fox. Any other brain busters? What else you got? Oh, did you know Heath Herring's coming back to fight on this card? What? I think he's fighting that dude you're talking about. Heath Crazy. Herring? Heath Herring. Ever since Amar Alakabaki? Yep. Amar Alakabari? Amir Alakabari. Dude, bring him up. <laughs> Go ahead and Google him for me. Because yeah, I thought Shane was fighting uh, Krokop or Wanderlei, mm. and then they're like, no, he's fighting this guy. So the Greek Roman current makes much less. Well, let's just look at his pictures. I know he was, he won like. Was he in the Olympics? Not the Olympics, but the world wrestling something. Some crazy wrestling thing. And look. then he won a gold medal, but then he got stripped. Why? Um, he failed twice for doping. Tr- oh, <laughs> no way. Yeah. But he looks like a beast, yeah. He looks like the genie from Aladdin. <laughs> He's jacked to the gills. That'd be a tough go. I haven't seen him fight. Is he undefeated? Boy, he has a thick thing. dome on him. He's a big boy. 6'4", 262, Greco. Greco really doesn't translate to MMA. Got to be honest with you. Uh, uh, MMA record's pretty small, pretty short. Oh, wow. Wait, what's up top there? Is that What is that? I think it's wrestling. Oh, there yeah, you go. Yeah, world championship matches for, for wrestling. Stripped of gold medal because he's juiced to the gills. Yeah. Okay, and that was 2013. So then go down. Okay. Go Scroll on down. And so he's TKO, TKO, TKO. First round, first round. <laughs> That's a fun fight for Sim versus Shane. That's going to be a fun one. Got anything else, brother? I think that's it for now. Oh, yeah. Amir Alakabari. Shout out to uh, Mike Swick, too. I see you doing big things, my brother. Uh, all right, man. Let's uh, 
Alan Joban should be here. I don't know if Versace flew him in on a helicopter, <laughs> Bentley, Royals Royce. I don't know how they do it, but uh, Alan Joban is up next, peeps. Oh, snaps. <laughs> oh, snaps. Bro, I messed up. I messed up. I knew you were coming in today. And I, I'm dressed like the Hamburglar. I, <laughs> I just want Versace to see this and be yeah. like, you know what? We need a plus size model. We, <laughs> but size. I fucked up and I wore my goddamn prison outfit. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm, I'm regretting it now. What what, what we have like? What are those like Yeezys? Some Yeezys. I, know you're a shoe I got guy. my jeans. Are you? Yeah, dude, you came dressed. You got this sweet coat. No, no wonder you're Versace. Model. You're, you're talking it up, man. I, I'm pretty casual today, but. But I'll I mean, take it. I'll take it. I mean, yeah, All you're day. a good looking dude. This, <laughs> uh, Rogan, I don't know if you listen to the companions. Rogan, Brian, yeah, Eddie, I tried to we'll him. argue all the time who's the best looking dude in the UFC. And I can just trump all of it. And I go, Joe Ban ha- is contractually tied to Versace. <laughs> Game over. I just trump it. I go, oh, cool. Versace. You always show the love, man. I get, I get people always sending me those videos bro and i'm like crying the whole time dude I'm i always call you bro. uh first team dime piece first team all yeah dime yeah yeah piece. i love yeah. it man i'm kind of mad at eddie bravo actually because me and eddie we go way back man and um he's never showing the love man he always seems <laughs> but i think eddie has a type you know eddie's mexican i think he kind of likes um i don't I, i'm I trying to i heard com- it one time he was saying robbie lawler maybe, come on maybe, <laughs> come on I me and he, robbie look like turds with eyes next to you <laughs> robbie lawler he's not me and robbie aren't even in this game yeah i'm, I'm kind of like come on eddie sh- show the love man but he might have a different type he also you know? might not want to you know you don't want to be too biased because you're boys yeah I, that's what i thought i thought maybe it was you know it was premeditated he's like i can't i, know, I can't talk like, you know talk up alan joe man we've been knowing each other for a long before time before we get into i mean when you th- when you think you know the Reebok deal goes into play and there's all this stuff and then I I forget where I was at I was uh, I think I was in Hollywood and then I was on tour in New York and I see your picture on the side of the building Equinox, yeah. yeah and I'm like yeah, what man. the f-? and you're this dude who probably the only guy who could be an actual model <laughs> you know what I'm saying like. It, people would say, you know, I'm not giving myself comments. They go, "You're a good looking dude." I'm like, mm. for a fighter, that's like, <laughs> yeah, that, for a fighter. that's like being the fastest kid at fat camp. Like, it's like, <laughs> all right, cool, man. That, that's how we rate girls normally. Like, like she's cute, you know, for a fighter. That's yes. how usually how the girl thing yes. goes. But. but you are an actual like you're in, you're not in the fighter game as far mm. as looks. You're <laughs> how did I? And I this is just me. I, the fans yeah. like, dude, get the funny. How in the hell did Versace even come about? Yeah, man, they became fans. They became fans. Well, it was uh, not just them, but it was. I don't know if you've ever heard of Bruce Weber. He's a uh, he's the guy who shot the campaign, and he's probably I want to say I don't know if he's the most famous photographer in the world, but he's the most kind of um, highly regarded. Mm-hmm. You know, he, he's been he does all these like Ralph Lauren campaigns, and he does he does some of the biggest campaigns in the world. And he probably makes the most money, and so I was on his radar. And uh, at the time, I was fighting in San Diego a year or two ago, and I was doing like a um, a web uh, web episode. Is that what it's called? Like a, like a little documentary thing, For releasing sure. it um, on the internet. And so my agent at the time was sending all of those to Bruce Weber, and so he kind of emotionally got attached to me. You know, he he saw who I was, he liked my look, he liked how I fought, and so he watched that fight that night. It was a fight night in San Diego. I think I think it was when Frank Mir knocked out Todd Duffy. I was who on did that you card. Fight? What's that? I I fought um, I fought Matt Dwyer, and we got a fight of the night. So it was like a real exciting fight. I landed a court real kick. The the crowd went nuts, and and that's what kind of like was the icing on the cake. He watched that fight live with all his people, and he was set. He was inked up to shoot the next Versace fragrance campaign, and he just said all of a sudden he had a vision. He calls me up after the fight. And uh, he was like, "Man, I saw your fight. I loved it. I'm a fan. I want to do the entire campaign." Like with a, a fighting type, um, like style, you know. I want it to be like about fighting, and then uh, the rest is history, man. After that, you know, we went and shot it in New York and Brooklyn for like a week, and and uh, you know, he brought in Gigi Hadid on the on the commercial and I all this it, stuff. Man. So it was a huge production, man. It was like an honor to be a part of it. Have you? Did you have any prior? Experience in modeling or anything like that? Yeah, for sure. Like I don't know if people know that about me or not, but so I. I I, I was a kid growing up in Louisiana, you know, not the furthest thing from modeling. Not a and, huge and, model and, scene in Louisiana. What's that? Not <laughs> a huge model scene in Louisiana <laughs> at all. Bro, not, yeah, it's not. Yeah, they're not known for it. It's pretty much non-existent. And um, 
Yeah, it was one of those random things, man. Like they, they, they asked me to go to New York and try it out, and I did it. So I was doing modeling since I moved to New York in 2002. And so I was dabbling in it for quite a while. And uh, did, I was you, did you move there to pursue modeling? Yes. It, gotcha. it was just an opportunity. It was yeah. just like, they were like, we want you to move to New York and do this. And I was like in college at the time. And I was like, well, I don't like college at all. I don't see, my, I don't yeah. see a future in this. I don't see myself. I don't know what I was. I didn't know what I wanted to do. I was like, let me take this opportunity. Did it for a long time. And I was successful in terms of I was making a living traveling the world. But I was like, the thing about modeling, man, is like, you can't get better at it. You could get better at speaking in front of a camera. You can sure. get better at fighting. You could train yeah. twice a day and how focused you are matters. But you can't like determine what people think if they like your look or not. And and it bugged the shit out of me because I would pretty much just be like waiting around for the phone to ring all day. And I'm like, I'm hoping they liked my look. Or it's out, I'm of, hoping out of your control. Out of my control. And it bugged the shit out of me. So I did that for 10 years, man. And Damn, then, that's a long time. Yeah. Did and, you do and, any big campaigns? Did you work with any? I, I did a little bit of everything over the years, man. I mean, one of my first big jobs was like Abercrombie. I was that young kid on the Abercrombie bag, you know, shirtless. It's like a little. Shredded before, up. Yeah. Just yeah. like one of those guys, man. And it was, it was cool. But like I said, it wasn't. I had reached my height of, um, of, of uh, I wasn't progressing any further. I knew what I was. You know, I was like a middle of the road model. So when I moved to LA 10 years ago is when I started training and fighting. And fighting is what took me to the next level. You know what I mean? UFC is what got me the eyes on me because the Bruce Webers and all these other famous photographers, they weren't looking at me before when yeah. I was just a normal cattle call model guy but now that i'm fighting on tv they were like oh this shit's interesting man this guy fights any models we need to get him on you know and so that's how it kind of picked up i dig it and you need a guy like uh weber or weber bruce weber yeah. you need a guy like bruce weber who has that vision who's gonna exactly. take a chance on a guy like because it's a little bit of a tough sell at first yeah. um you know, because you you are a fighter and you are in the octagon. Some people, if they they if they're not a fan of the UFC, they tune in like, oh my god, and this <laughs> is the guy. You know, this is the the campaign for model for Versace. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you need a guy who has vision like that and gets creative and can step outside the box. So mm. shout out to that dude. But Absolutely. for you, it's not like modeling. You know, before you came on, I, I was talking a little bit about Paige Van Zandt and stuff like that. Yeah. And she also has the look. She's on Dancing with the Star. She mm -hmm. has all these opportunities. Very marketable. But that very marketable. And so are you. But yeah. she's how do I say it? She doesn't have the skills that Alan Joe Ban has. Does that make sense? So they fighting in, in the in the in the cage. Yes. No. I appreciate that, man. Yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. I, I mean, I don't think anyone's <laughs> like, "What, Brennan? You crazy?" No, no, no. No one's like disagreeing. But um, it's not like that Versace campaign took time away from your training. Like it's no. not like you're on focus where you're doing this world tour, you no, know, in, in no. Belize and in, in Milan, and you, you know, it's not like I you're wouldn't be mad at him if, if we did that. Yeah, but it wasn't. It was literally uh, like a one-time job. I went and shot it in a week uh, for about a week in Brooklyn, and it was done. And then it took like a year. That was you know over a year ago. Damn. And then it took about a year before I actually saw it come out and everything. But um. Yeah, yeah, no, it, it hasn't really been taking time away. You know, it, it is it is a balance, though, man. You know, like like with anything, when you're fighting, that's like your priority because you, ha you have to be mentally focused. So anytime you're doing interviews or, or side jobs or whatever, you know, I still teach Muay Thai uh, three days a week, you know, and it's all the these things. Uh, no, I, I teach at uh, 10th Planet Burbank. Oh, nice. Uh, Muay Thai at 10th Planet Burbank. Um, and uh, so, yeah, it's always, it's always a balance, man, keeping that focus because I know that, that uh, like I said earlier, man, in the story, like, I wasn't going anywhere. None of these big photographers or design companies were, were knocking down my door until they saw me on TV. So I know where everything comes from. And it, it comes from being successful as a fighter and then yeah. the rest will take care of itself. But for a guy like you, I see pa Paige and Rhonda can do these other projects and can still compete in the UFC. Mm -hmm. At 170 pounds, at a welterweight in the UFC – Let's say you're doing all this travel, trying to do movies. You, there's no way you're competing because you're saying because my it, divisions there, a there, lot. There's, there's, it's, there's, it's too stacked. Yeah, exactly. There's, it's, it's, 100 percent. I'll see the the men have developed more and there, there's more depth. Yeah, at 170, you're talking about murderers row. Just it crack is, the top man. 15. So you have a guy. Uh, name anyone in the top 15. You have a guy like um, you know uh, Tony Fergus. Uh, granted, he's a, a 55. Yeah. In anyone at 70. Name yeah. anyone at 70. And their their main goal is 
beating everyone to get to the gold. Yeah. So when you do these other projects, I just feel like the game's too competitive now. But the UFC is owned by WME, which is an entertainment business. So they want to raise the notoriety of these UFC fighters mm -hmm. by putting them in movies, by having them do this stuff. Man, so I'm it's hoping a weird so. Balance. I'm, I want that to happen. That was the main reason why um, this last fight that I had was on Big Fox, obviously. And and that's the card that I wanted. Not so much. I didn't really even care about the point. I was trying to get a top 15 guy. There was nobody available. They gave me Mike Perry. I said, whatever. I'll fight anybody. I just want to fight, fight on this card. What's that? Dangerous fight. Dangerous. It was. It was. Because he's only 2-0 and in the UFC, but he's got not, he was 9-0 and with 9 knockouts. And the guy's just dangerous because he's so aggressive. He could knock out anybody if he lands, but there was holes in the game that I saw. You know, he had those holes in the defense and everything. But I just... I wanted to fight on Big Fox, man, for exactly what you just said. Like, with the new ownership, I knew that a lot of eyes would be on, you know, the Big Fox cards. It would open me up to a new realm of a, an audience. And at the same time, man, I don't know if people even realize this. There was, like, five or six fights. I can't remember. And on that card, they were all welterweight. So in my eyes, I was like, this is the fucking... This is the welterweight Kumite taking place right yeah. here on Fox. And it's like whoever shines the brightest, that's who's going to put the entire division on check. So that was my goal. I was like, I'm going to fight on Big that's Fox. Smart. I'm going to let all the new the new execs at the ownership at the UFC see me. What I do, I'm going to get a new fan base, and I'm going to outshine every other welterweight on the card. And that was my goal the entire time because I knew it could kind of boost me in the rankings and hopefully get me in the top 15. It was a smart plan, and it obviously yeah. worked out for you, but... With that that fight with Mike Perry, did they before they even offered Mike Perry? Did they tell you it was going to be on Fox? Did you know you were going to be part of the Fox main card? Well, I didn't know I was going to be exactly. I didn't know I was going to be on the if I would be on the main event yet. I mean the main the main card yeah. yet. But that we told him we said, look, Alan would love to fight in California on that date. So we gave him that, and then they gave me Mike Perry, and it just so happens that they bumped me up to the. Uh, the was main, there the main card when you got the name Mike Perry? I know you want a top fifteen guy, but it was just like cool. I just want to fight in Sacramento. Yeah, Mike Perry, crazy dangerous. Everyone's super high on this guy. Yeah. I was breaking the card down on this, and I said, my heart says Joe Ban's gonna win. If if Allen comes with, he has more more skills than this guy. Mm -hmm. If he comes with the right game plan, he should beat him. But if Allen decides again this striking battle, like this all out slugfest, yeah, it, he, there's, it's probably not gonna go in his favor. It, so I said, my my heart goes <laughs> Allen all day. Yeah. My brain, if Allen decides to get in a slugfest, it's going to be a tough night. It depends how I fought that night, absolutely. Um, the the fight of the night, Allen, might have lost that fight. You know what I mean? That's what I'm scared of because you, you have that dog in you. Right. Which is fun, and you're going to need that at certain times of your career. Not against Mike Perry. But don't open up the door to that. Yeah, no, not against like him. You have too many skills to keep winning. Like. The only thing in the UFC that really matters, especially with, with your level of notoriety, win. Just win, baby. Just freaking win. You know what I'm saying? So You're when right. I saw that Mike Perry fight, I'm like, oh, man, please, Alan, please, use your skills. <laughs> and I saw him like, oh, snaps. Because yeah. obviously Mike Perry's never fought a guy to your level. Mm. And he's just coming. I, when he came out of the game, I'm like, this dude is uber aggressive. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're not fighting these bums you're used to, man. Then mm. boom, you, you crack him. You can mm. see he's like, oh, shit, that's not Snowflake. That's not Snowflake. You can kind of tell he's like, he chills out. He's like, oh, shit, son. Yeah, yeah man. Dude yeah. has skills. Like, yeah. you can't just bull rush your way into this. Like, yeah. that's and not how you're going to win. We we broke down, like, methodically how to beat this guy so many times, man. I mean, the entire camp. And it gave, that's where the, you know how it is. Like, your confidence comes from your training. And when your coach is, like, set a game plan and it gives you the confidence. Like, this is what I need to do to beat this guy. I'm going to work at it every single day. When you get better at those techniques and the movements that you need to implement to beat somebody, your confidence rises. So um, I knew that I could totally beat this guy. And, and that was my goal was to, like, was to um, kind of make him look like a clown because we had a lot of shit talk going into the fight back and forth. Um, well, more so from his end. I was kind of ignoring him, but he's a big shit talker. And um, But, yeah, man, it was tough for me to get over the hurdle of – I love to entertain and I love I love to when I get hit to hit back and let the guy know I'm not going anywhere. And it was tough for me to get over the whole the hurdle of just saying just win the fight. Just technically outclass this guy. It doesn't matter if I get a bonus. Just win the fight. The rest will do it uh, do itself. So, um I finally convinced myself of that, man. Like just stick and move, stick and move, stay out of danger, work the percentage game. We were all about percentages like get hit less. Hit him more, Hell you know, yeah. rather than standing in the pocket. Yeah. So 
So once I get over that, man, I was able to kind of um, implement it during the fight. And um, I, w- I was happy the way it came out, man. I love a fight of the night and I love a knockout. But I, to see the people on, on, on social media who were hating on me at first saying I was going to get my face smashed in, a lot of those people said, man, you won me over as a fan because like I, 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 I was uh, impressed by your strategy and your footwork. And then like you showed wrestling and you showed other aspects of your game that people didn't really know I had. So that kind of was... Uh, it was it gave me more pride than the knockout almost you know what i mean uh, yeah for sure and i th- i feel like a guy like mike perry uh, he has the skills and he he has this knockout power but you can't be this bull in a china shop and compete in the top 15 you just it's too easy to You'll get, get exposed for. you just well cuz it showed you you had those kicks and he was kind of like jesus why are you kicking my leg like he mm. almost was like he's never been kicked before yeah. like when you start taking away his legs he was kind of like all right, well, that didn't feel good. And then he had no answer for it. Yeah. You know, so I think for him it's a learning experience. I don't think he's a guy who's just going to go away. Mm-hmm. He, has, he has a lot of power. Big win on your part. Do you realize that, and to your point, how you want the notoriety, you want this fan base, and obviously Paige being the headline, bringing her dance with the stars, which – you know, I'm sure that fan base loves you as well. Now, especially, it's the biggest card on Fox. You know that the ratings came out. That's the the biggest. No, in, in you're three, saying in, in this three was, years. In three, so it's the out biggest, of the 22 events or whatever, this was Fox 22. This was the biggest card in three in years, ratings in the last three years. Get the fuck out of here, dude. Just that's, came, that just came out today, Chen. I think yeah, we did on today. a current event. Yeah, that's that's amazing. That's awesome. So I mean, that, that's exactly what I wanted. I wanted the viewership. I wanted the, the audience. Man, that's that that that's feels cool, really right? good to hear, man. It's um, cool. I'm excited about that, man. For for you and this for you, it's great. For yeah. Paige, it's not. Yeah. You know what? Because right. you finally get that. Because right. Dance with the Stars fan base, they're not going to buy a pay per view with Paige on it. But mm. if it's free, they're like, I like her. I voted for her. Let me yeah. check it out. Jesus Christ! <laughs> what happened? You know. What? But for you, they're yeah, like, yeah. hell yeah! Check out yeah. Joe Band, a new crowd. Versace model. You know, like yeah. why those Versace models don't air during the Fox the commercials. Yeah, yeah, I know. And it's funny enough, my commercial started airing during fight week. It came back during fight week, so it it put a little added pressure. But um, yeah, I, I would that would have been dope, right? To to win the fight and then my commercial play after that would have been nice. Like, why cake. doesn't WME uh, or the UFC go? Hey, make sure you know during uh, right before uh, Allen's fight, let's yeah. hear this because people are eat. I think even after, like after you win, mm. then when you know when uh, decision come up next or uh, the official announcement with Bruce Buffer, then that Versace commercial. Everybody airs, wins. People are like, why holy not? shit. That dude's a Versace That's model, the just fought, and he yeah. just murked this dude. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> holy shit. Yeah, no, I, I wish it would have done it, man. Um, uh, but yeah, I'm glad to hear that the ratings were good, man. It's I tell cool, you what, right? on that card, Michelle Waterson, dude, I'm 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 such a fan of hers now. Me too. I, I, I love her. I've always known her from the underground, somewhat. Like, seen her fighting on, um, I think she was fighting on like Axis TV or HGNet at the time. She was always on there in Invicta, and, and Invicta. Yeah, Adam but Champ. S- since she's been in UFC, she was kind of under the radar, uh, as, for me at least, under my radar. I didn't really. I think she's only had two fights. She might have went one on one, and I didn't really see much out of her. So. Originally going into the fight, I was thinking, well, Paige is the more proven girl, although Paige only has like half the fights that she has. But um but I thought Paige was gonna out grapple her. And then like met Michelle during the mm. during the fight week. She's an awesome chick, real positive energy, real confident. And she went out there and just like she she beat her at her own game. Uh, pa- Paige went for that like head and arm throw, missed it, and then Michelle got her against the cage and, and applied that on her and then got their R and C. It's that, crazy, man. That's how that fight goes. 99 out of 100 times. You think so? Michelle's just so much more skilled, man. Skill like, I, I, I've, yeah. known, I've known uh, Michelle Larson for 12 years. Oh, wow. She's trained with us in Denver, then I'd go to Jackson. And she's, she's been in the game for that long, too. Forever. She's got a, yeah, a variety and of She techniques. has a karate background. I'll see the karate hottie. I thought she was just a karate girl. No, I didn't know she had she that grappling. She grabbed her ass off. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's with Paige, when too. I saw that, I'm just like, what are they doing, man? It's, yeah. it's a tough fight for her. She'll learn. But again, with that marking, with Paige, with her skill set, you know, and you can even tell with the UFC odds and, and the way people were picking Paige to win because all the marketing is going towards Paige. Yeah, yeah. But the skills over here, mm-hmm. but all we see is this marking over here. So. And look at Michelle; she's a really attractive girl, man. She's a mother, speaks well, yeah, good person, has the skills. Who 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 wins in the hot factor? Oh, them too. brother. <laughs> I'm at UFC, you- at UFC on Fox 22. <laughs> I mean, Versace should just did a fast show afterwards. <laughs> Everyone has black eyes and shit and busted lips. Yeah. That'd be a dope. Yeah. I mean, because you got Paige, Watterson, you yeah. got yourself. 
Uh, Sage Northcutt's no punk either. Sage, yeah. With that body, he's bodied up. <laughs> with that body. Yeah. Mickey oh, Gall's man. losing that fight. If it's a modeling contest, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mickey Gall's out. You out, son. Because <laughs> Sage is bodied up. He's what yoked you, up, man. Yeah. He's yoked. What do you What do you think of uh, fighting one of those guys? Does that do anything for you? Man, honestly. Is they're, they're, they're a co-main event. So if you want to talk about, hey, I, I want notoriety, blah, blah, blah. Add that to the you know it, bank. It, it's funny because I got done with the fight. I didn't get an interview on Fox. I was pissed off. I already had like I was in fucking kill mode already because I went through all that shit with Mike Perry for eight weeks, and then he was just a dick. The entire what were you fight gonna say? Week. What was the game plan? Well, man, I wanted to call out the top. Look, I, I was just gonna say, look, three in a row, five out of my last six, three fight. I mean, I was gonna give him my entire resume. You've really only lost one fight in the UFC. exactly that that, that I got Turn robbed in Brazil. So it, it's really whatever that is, seven out of eight or nine out of eight out of nine. I don't know what it is, but. I thought I had done enough, and I wanted to just lobby for him, and I want to let him know, look, guys, you need to be paying attention. I'm not only – and if there's anybody who's closest, closer to me on being in the, in the cuffs of the top 15, a guy like Kobe Covington, great fighter, tough yeah. wrestler. But the, th- the difference in, in us is he's doing it with a lot of decisions and ground and pound. I'm doing it with style points. I have three fight of the night bonuses. I've got two standing elbow knockouts. I've got three first-round knockouts. All kinds of other shit that looks style points matters, obviously, in it's this everything. sport. It's, it's everything. It's entertainment. It's everything. So I'm winning. I'm, I'm already I have the best record um, to be in, into the top 15, and I have the best record in terms of style points. So I wanted to lobby for that, man. I wanted to let them know, look, this is what needs to happen. I don't know who votes on this, but you need to put me there. No microphone, no interview after the fight. I was kind of st- not pissed off at that, but I was still in kill mode from the fight, and then I didn't get to speak, so I just had to like vent. So afterward, I went... And uh, we were talking about the fights, and I said, "Look, I just want a top fifteen opponent. I want Who'd a top you say fifteen this to? opponent." Uh, you know, I when I talked to Megan O'Leary, yeah, yeah, and then um, and then the little uh, what do you call that, like the presser afterward. Yeah. And so the, somebody brought up the uh, Sage Northcutt fight, and I said, "You know what? I either want a top fifteen opponent, or to me being the top fifteen, or you know what? If obviously if Sage Northcutt and Mickey Gall are such an asset to the company where they're going to co-main event over a guy like me or a guy like Uriah Faber, yeah. who's a fucking legend, and he's, he's on the Coco, yes. he's not the co-main. Um, then I said, look, if these guys have that type of notoriety or star power, then I'll fight the winner of them. I mean, it doesn't, I, don't think, I don't know if it really does much for me, but if they're that big of a star, I just want to either, either main event a card, co-main event a card, or be in the top 15. And if fighting one of these guys who doesn't really theoretically makes sense in terms of where they're ranked but if star power if they're the star power that's going to get me to where i want to be i'll fight the winner of them but with that said man i don't know that now that mickey got won if that makes sense if sage would have won it would have made more sense because sage is the biggest star somewhat and um is he though is he is, is he i, I think don't know so. I, 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 he gets paid more he, he gets, gets paid, paid more, more. doesn't mean he's the biggest star he, he gets <laughs> he gets more hype than uh mm. than mickey yeah he has more I mean, his Insta- like the UFC retweets every Instagram of uh, Sage Northcutt. They don't do so much for. I mean, he's crushing apples, and they're and they're like, is and, that that impressive though? I don't think it's. That impressive. Can you crush an no. apple? You know what I thought about doing? I thought about taking two cantaloupes <laughs> and crushing them, and going your move, Sage. Yeah. And then it hit me, Brendan, you're thirty as fuck. He's twenty. Yeah. Don't do that, sir. <laughs> that is a bad move. I mean, he is strong as fuck. But yeah, dude, every time he does, guess. every time he does a backflip or, or swings a machete around, like they, they love it. They eat it up. So swings so. a machete around. But <laughs> for a guy like you, I, I get what you're saying. And when I saw him, I'm like, God, I'd love to see Alan freaking murk these two. You could yeah. probably beat both of them up <clears> in the same night. <laughs> Maybe in the same match. But Mickey Gall's striking is 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 very rudimentary, very amateur. He's just yeah. not there yet. Yeah, 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 yeah. Killer ground game though. Or like he's got the, the, the he's got the even killers. Uh, uh, killers. A uh, 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 I think killers are a strong word to to give that gentleman at one seventy. He has skills and he's a brown belt. I he guess smells it's, blood it's, in it's the compared water to who? Certain, yeah. Because we're going based mm-hmm. off what? CM Punk. Yeah. I I feel like if they gave you CM Punk. You, we could have a contest, and you could pick the minute, even down to the second, and how you want to finish him. You could say, uh, "Let's vote." You guys vote. I'll finish him. However you want. You want a flying kick <laughs> off the <laughs> cage? Yeah. What minute? What round? I'll do it. What's you want a go go plata? Uma plata? Yeah. I, I can do that if you want it. So submitting CM Punk, that to me, that's not like, oh my god, check out his jujitsu. He he, has, you see the right. Uh, uh, frame of mind and the right process, and he's passing guard and he has, right, he has right. good control. To say he's a monster there, 
I'd have to see him against uh, like a Gunnar Nelson. Let's see. Oh, how he does. Yeah. If you want to say no. monster, Gunnar Nelson to me is a monster. Yeah, so he's when we not say ready monster, for a Gunnar Nelson. You got a Gunnar Nelson yeah. in that division. So um, for you though to fight either one of those guys, I don't know if it does much for you. I agree. I You'd agree. almost look like a bully. It, to me, it would only be me, me, me and my, my manager were talking about this, and it, to me, it would be like if they and, and this isn't even going to happen. I think both of the guys are probably going to drop back down to fifty five. But if they said, "Look, we want you to fight fight Sage or Mickey Gall and main event the card, uh, a fight night in freaking wherever Utah or some shit like that," I'd be like, "Hell yeah, let's do it, hundred percent." But agree. if they want me to like fight one of them on a prelim or something, I'm like, "Does this where does this take me?" Because I feel like I'm expected to win anyway. So. It's an easy payday. Yeah, let's I mean, be honest. So, like, there's no easy paydays, but with those, with, with those two, and with your but skill there set are and levels your veteran, in the in, in the UFC. There's like, there's levels, and there's also if, if whoever's managing those two, they have to be very careful with the next moves they make with those two, especially Sage, because there's some uh, experts out there go. Sage is by no means ready for the UFC. They mm-hmm. need to take him out and have, give him experience outside because he's just making very amateur mistakes. You see mm-hmm. him defend the choke and he's pushing up on the elbow. You're like, what is going on here? He, he's I, don't yeah. I don't think you take him out. I don't think you take him out. I just think you got to be careful. Lower level. Can't UFC give him a guy guys. like Alan Joban. Yeah. You can kick his face off. <laughs> and then what do we do? Then what the fuck do we? All right. Yeah. He's been choked out twice now. Then he got wheel kicked into fucking... You know Texas here mm. by Alan Joban. <laughs> we can't sell this anymore. There's yeah. no sell there. And then Mickey Gall, I, he wouldn't take the fight. There's no way. I, you I, can see he's a smart enough guy where he's going. Uh, I'll take uh, Hardy. He calls out Dan Hardy. Who has fought, fucking, where did that come? Might from? Call man. me out. I mean, yeah. but, but Dan, Dan Hardy. Dan Hardy's been retired for two or three years with that. What is it? A wolf uh, heart? It's yeah, like he's a, a wolf issue. He's a super issue with his heart. He hasn't yeah. fought forever. And there's just like. Speculation whether he's coming back. Right. He's he like, wants to. I mean, I know he wants yeah, to. Yeah, but and he Jesus, wants to fight Mickey. Fun, but like that was it. I thought it was a bad call out. I thought it was. It, it just it came out of left field for me too as well. It's like it, you, he's smart. You said it, man. He's methodical because he's like, you know what? I got on. I got in the UFC because I what's that show? Road to the Octagon, right? Or something like that. Uh, looking you, for a fighter. Looking Dana, for a fighter. Right? Something. Yeah. Yeah. Looking. So he got on that show. He called out CM Punk. He got it. It put him in the <laughs> limelight right away. He after that win, he calls out Sage Northcutt. He knows how to keep the train moving along, so that's what he was doing. But I thought, like you said, Dan Hardy, they just caught me off guard, man. But um, you can't. It's almost hard to respect. Like I'm, I like Mickey Gall as a fighter. I think he has huge. I think he has more potential than Sage Northcutt. I mm-hmm. like to watch him fight. But that management, whoever's working with Mickey Gall, needs to be very careful. And Dan Hardy's a, a tough fight too, man. It's a, kind of, but it's also, dude, he's not even the. Like, game yeah he's you might as well call out i mean he's not even (laughs) call call it hoist gracie i mean fuck (laughs) the fuck dan hardy i was like what the might as well call mike goldberg like (laughs) you might have a better chance getting him to fight i don't know what's going on here but again his management needs to be very careful what they do with both of them joe rogan he should call out joe rogan (laughs) might as well joe has entertained the, the you know the fact of uh, possibly fighting or something for years, and maybe it was just a tease, but it's just a tease. Man, I he think went that... past the PDs. <laughs> I know, he I know. knows that. Yeah, but you saw it like ah. they could waive the four month testing. Are for you talking Joe. about the Brock Lesnar thing? They do yeah, that for exactly. Rogue. They, 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 they do it for Brock. Yeah. Yeah. Wave it. Let the fight happen. Make a bunch of fucking money, and then he'll get popped after and have to give twenty percent. Dude, to Mickey I would Gull. I would bet my life on it. Rogan beat Mickey Gall. Man, uh, yeah, I, because it's I gonna guarantee be, you, it's going to be a ground fight. And Rogan, Maybe. have you rode with Joe before? Uh, I have not. Okay, I have so, not. I know he's a black belt, but also it's been I, years. But he's strong as fuck. Well, <laughs> I mean, gorilla strong, obviously. <laughs> but at the same time, his his knowledge, but his yeah. stand up. Have you yeah. ever seen Joe? Oh. Have you seen his taekwondo, dude? Like his wheel kick. As long as like, you don't get hit with that one kick. That, yeah, he has that one kick. That, that is one, that one fucking kick. That one kick. That lands. It's game over. Yeah, you're he on will the highlight reel for break the rest of your every life. rib in your body if he lands that what do you, that spinning side kick or whatever. But other than that, I think you'd be able to, you know, uh, weather the storm with Joe. But yeah, no, that would be a, a crazy super fight. Mickey Gall, the young kid that's calling out everybody, calls out Joe Rogan. <laughs> Joe takes it. It would never happen. Which, but. And dude, what weight did they fight at? Is Joe making 170? Dude, that's going to be a tough <laughs> cut, brother. <laughs> We're going to need to do a catch weight about 190. Yeah, you better get on the And, Do-che, and you Do-che need that diet. exemption, son. <laughs> um, is, so your management, obviously there's a game, in this day and age, you can't just go, I'll take whoever you give me next. Yeah. You can't, man. Like It has to be calculated. You have to come up 
really with a marketing plan on who you're going to go after, how you're going to go after them. You need you obviously need to be in the top 15. I haven't seen the rankings. I don't know if they put you in there. Why they, you're not in there is crazy. They because did, man. They, they did, did put you in there? Well, the UFC.com is not showing me in there. Uh, I think the UFC Tonight, the TV show, officially releases them tonight. So I'm going to look at it, but I don't think I made it, man. It, it's, it's How does that happen? Because I can argue with anyone. You mm-hmm. really only have one loss in the UFC. Right. There's only one. That's insane at and, one and, and even if you count the second one against Worley, which I kind of got robbed. That's what I'm saying. Exactly. exactly. Even that if you that count doesn't that count. One, I, I don't count it either in my head. But even if you count it on paper, look, Matt Brown, for, unless they haven't switched yet. But from what I saw yesterday, Matt Brown is still at number 15. And look, he is a tough fucking guy. Nobody likes to fight Matt Brown. But the numbers don't lie. And he's lost... Three in a row and like six five. out of seven, sir. Six out of seven. Six out of seven. He's lost six out of seven and he's still in the rankings. And then Jake Ellenberger as well. Jake Ellenberger has lost like I want to say like five out of his last six or something. He had like one one win in there over like Ellen um over um I forget who, but what I'm getting at these guys. Jake, are tough. Jake beat Matt Brown. Right, he kicked it. That's what it was. He, he knocked the liver out. kick exactly. So these guys are tough, and they're fighting the best in the world. I get it. That's why they're still in there, because they're saying, you know what? They're fighting tough guys, so you can't always count these losses. But you need fresh blood in there. You need you need a new look. If guys, just because they're fighting tough guys, if you're losing five or six in a row, and I'm winning five or six in a row, I got to be in there. You got to mix up the division. Got to have fresh fighters so in there. So why don't you call one of them out? Yeah, I mean, that's going to be the next step. You know what I'm Matt I, Brown, Alan Joban, if you tell me... You- I called him out last fight, and in a respectful way. I've got nothing against Matt Brown, but for I called sure. him out. It's a great and, fight and, for you, and, and, and I didn't hear back from him. I think he might have had somebody else on his mind, but yeah, because he's you know he's been fighting the hoo hoo, but but now he has to take whatever they give him. Yeah, he's lucky he has a job. Let's be real, six out of seven. That's a tough sell. Yeah. So if they go, all right, you got Alan Joban, he's gonna go. Yeah, all right, thank you for the opportunity. I'll, that's a tough fight, but I'll take it. Now he has to address that you were fighting, but for you. Uh, uh, fighting a guy like Matt Brown puts you at that next level because Matt Brown is Matt Brown. He's the immortal. We know Matt Brown with his for his toughness, his tenacity. Yeah, he's proven. And he's, he's, yeah. he's beat a lot of good guys. <clears throat> Remember uh, when he fought? Was it Robbie Lawler for the title con- contention? Remember that? And yeah, yeah. Oh, and it looked like he was out of there, and then he came back and weathered the storm. So for like we five know rounds. that Matt Brown. I don't care if Matt loses nine out of ten. I'm always going to tune in to watch Matt it. Brown so versus for you, Eric Cruz. Perfect. That was one of my favorite fights ever. That fight night main event. Or so whatever. for you, a guy like Matt Brown. Uh, even a Jake Ellenberger, big name. Yeah. Jake's my boy. Uh, th- those are the fights you guys need to be going for. Yeah, no, you need same a thing. I've trained with Jake before, 15. yeah, but it's it's got to be business at the end of the day. He's he's been kind of lingering at that fourteen fifteen spot for quite a while, and it's like there's guys like me, there's guys like Kobe Covington, there's got other guys out there in the division that deserve to be in that top fifteen and making their way up towards the title shot. They're not doing it yet. They need to kind of fix that. The the, the, the fight I'm kind of eyeballing, man, is um, next weekend. The uh, what is it? The end of the year card, you know, yeah. and um, 209 is it 207? Oh, no, 207. 207, 207. Yeah. Rousey 207. Nunes, exactly. Yeah. Rousey's comeback, and um, there's uh, Tarek Safadine is fighting the Korean guy, the stun gun or something like that. Yes, Dong Hyun Kim, stun gun Kim. Yeah, so that's I, I wouldn't mind. I don't know who's gonna win that one, but I'm thinking I think the stun gun's ranked higher, and uh, yeah, Kim versus Safadine. And let's say Kim wins that fight, calling out Kim. Uh, we're both we both just fought. He'll well, he'll be fighting soon, but it'll be a timeline wise where we both can, it'll make sense if we both fight like March or something. So um, uh, and I hear you. And and uh, stun gun, he's finally back, right? He was on a little bit of a yeah, he of was a, injured or something. Yeah, he might have had an injury. But those guys, uh, granted, he's number nine. You want his spot, and then mm-hmm. Tarek Safdie's twelve. You're saying not a big as a name as Matt it's, Brown. It, it, no. Yeah. No, and and to be honest, and it's no hate. Matt Brown's the easier fight. I know you're not looking for easy fights, but none of them are easy. Mm. But as far as name recognition, as far as getting you more mainstream, a Matt Brown or even the winner of Johnny Hendricks, if Johnny Hendricks, no matter what happens, oh, jo- what about Neil Johnny Magny, Hendricks yeah. and Neil yeah. Magny? Neil's Absolutely. my boy, and uh, but Johnny Hendricks ranked number six. Wow. Alan Joban, you're te- <laughs> look me now. Yeah. You're telling me you wouldn't beat Johnny Hendricks right now? Yeah, man. It, and, and it would do exactly like it did to Stephen Thompson. Look at Stephen Thompson. He came into the rankings, knocked out Johnny Hendricks. Next thing you know, he's fighting for the belt. I mean, it, 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 John, a win over Johnny Hendricks could leapfrog you into the your, top five. Your issue is these guys, because you're dangerous as shit. You're not in the top 15. Them going, I'll take it. But the guys I'm speaking about, Jake Ellenberger, Matt Brown, Johnny Hendricks, 
they're in no position to turn any fight down now. Yeah. And you're you're the type of dude that the UFC needs to promote cuz though make no mistake about it. A lot of those top 15 rankings, you have these these voters that are honey dicked by <laughs> by uh the the media and they're honey dicked right. by uh star power mm-hmm. and you, you think Paige should be ranked and again I'm not picking on Paige I love Paige skill wise should she be ranked that high you're crazy what is she you're telling you know she's, she's uh, top, was she top ten, she was higher top than Michelle Watterson she, she was eight I think or seven before the fight she was you tell me her. Johnny Henderson the the sixth best welterweight in the world you tell yeah. me Matt Brown's fifth fourteen best welterweight in the world. A lot of these, uh, and look at the heavyweight division. She's number nine. She's Seven number nine. Degrees. She's number and nine. They probably, that's, they that's, probably, they lowered her. That's the new ranking. They lowered yeah, her. And that's, you ones. know, that division's not that stacked. But <clears throat> a lot of times, media has their favorites. Yeah. They have their favorites. Uh, you look at the heavyweight division, there's some guys who they just have horrible records, but for whatever reason, those voters, they, they hold it dear to their heart. Same with the Heisman vote. A lot of times, you'll see a guy on the West Coast get way more voting, or a guy on the East Coast get way more voting because he's constantly in the limelight. Mm-hmm. He's constantly getting you know the media write ups because people prefer that guy. Mm-hmm. So with you, I, it's not about about can you beat anyone in the top fifteen? One hundred percent. I like your odds against anyone in the top fifteen. You just gotta fu- you just need your crack at it. Yeah, yeah. Well, whoever whoever does it, but that uh, I think Kim this Safin, weekend. Again, man, that doesn't do that much for you. Yeah, I think after this this weekend, we're gonna kind of make some decisions and find somebody to call out, or you know, we'll, we'll talk to the UFC. I mean, it's, it's weird now. We've had this relationship with Joe Silva for so long, and and he's done now, man. You know, Joe Joe Silva, the matchmaker, is no longer. I think who's the new guy? Mickey Maynard, I believe. He I was the uh, he was the promoter for Legacy Fighting Championship mm. out in Texas, and um, so they brought him on. So I'm not sure who's doing what, but. I want to get a good relationship with the new matchmaker. Now it's a business, together. though. Because yeah. before, you had this personal relationship, whether it hurt you or helped you, but you at least could text Joe Silva. Mm-hmm. It wasn't such a business. Now it's more, it's very black and white. What's going to get the ratings? What's going to get the approval? But I don't know who you're, who's your manager? Uh, it's uh, Epoch Agency. Yeah. Okay, so th- this is an easy marketing deck. Mm-hmm. Versace model, basically lost one fight in the fucking UFC, fight of the night's, finishes yeah what are we doing just fought on the biggest ufc on fox in three years had an amazing fight beat a guy who's undefeated knockout artist what, what, do, you, what do you guys exactly. want exactly what do you want Can, give me a meeting because i will go through the top 15 all right you got matt brown 15 give me that why mm-hmm. watch this look mm-hmm. at look at his record jake ebler look at his record we can keep going if you want johnny Hendricks. i can, I can give you that if you want you know what i'm saying like for, it's frustrating for me because you deserve so much more, and a lot of it's about marking these days. But you have that. Yeah. Like if you're yeah. John Fitch, I got nothing for you. <laughs> There's no, I got yeah. I don't have an argument for you. You know what I'm saying? Like this would be a tough sell, my man. I know you keep winning, but you win by decision. Yeah. You're not very good in interviews. <laughs> you talk about dying in there. Like it's a fucking. You have no sponsors. But with you, it's like yeah. This is a. Slam and, and like dunk. you said, man, with the new, new ownership, it's a business, and they're gonna want to market their fighters. They've already shaved down the roster, you know. I mean, it was like at what, like six fifty, and now they've already cut like a hundred people this year, or whatever, hundred fighters. So it's a shorter, it's a, a smaller roster, and I'm hoping they do start to, you know, extend the the PR and the love to, every, to more than just four people, you know. Mm-hmm. Now, especially now that like kind of a a lot of their guys are losing, you know. The Page and Sage both lost recently. They're not doing as great, so. Yeah, man, they might start distributing the love a little they, more. They, they need stars, and that's why I think you see, you know, like the the new women's division and this interim belt. Like the belts mean something, but they need more stars because it's very evident that ratings correlates with stars. You could have the best skilled guys in the world fill a Fox card. If those people aren't marketable and they're not likable and they're not draws, no one tunes in. It, it, that's just the way the game works. Yeah, you got to have the effect. You got to see something. You have to. Man. Yeah. So they're they're. Uh, I, hopefully they go through the thing and they go. All right, F- Alan Joban. Why? Why the <laughs> fuck isn't there? We need to do something. His next modeling shoot. We need behind the scenes. We got to yeah. do this. It, it's an easy sell, man. I'm 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 not just pumping up because you're here, but it, it's it's an easy sell. I'm not saying anything. No one doesn't know except for maybe the ufc right now yeah no i mean to me I, I see the same way obviously but on paper to me it's like why am i not getting that push but that's what we're working on right now you know this is a 
a good year, three and zero this year, undefeated this year, undefeated this year, and 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 everything was kind of going my way. So um, we're hoping going into the new year that that we get that extra push from it and everything. And I'm so. not saying you need to uh, do like Gay, Gay Guard Musasi did and talk shit or tweet out. Look at him coming out. You don't yeah. need to do that. You really yeah. don't. Like I, I think if your management or even you, you guys need to have a sit down with this new matchmaker. I'm like, listen, man, check this out. And he's gonna go. You're fucking right. We, I'm sorry, man. We saw that you did great. Mm-hmm. Look at this. Yeah, yeah. 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 He, here's my list of who I would murk easily. And I know, <laughs> and I, and I, and I know their, and I know their contracts are high as shit. And you're not paying me as much. I'll murk these guys. Yeah. Look at me like your janitor. I'm the new UFC janitor at welterweight <laughs> division. I'm going to clean out these guys with these high contracts. Yeah. I'm just going to go in there. I'm going to rip their faces off with these wheel kicks. Huh? <laughs> and they're gonna be like, great idea. And now I'm going to do a Versace yeah. commercial after. Yeah. Any questions? And you're their new favorite. That's you know it, man. I mean, I mean, Sage Northcutt makes more than me when he loses. You know what I'm saying? It's crazy, right? It's insane, man. But yeah, that's, that's definitely... The mindset and the goal that we have going into the new year, man. So I'm just gonna keep my fingers crossed. And, and then uh, before we get you out of it, your your training, your your obviously rain's closed. That's where I met you at. Was rain yeah, yeah. in Black House? Yeah. Well, originally it was rain, man. We were driving all the way out there, getting that. Re- if I was going there specifically for the wrestling. Me too. Um, you t- yeah, and I remember you were training with uh, my buddy at the time. I can't even remember, big black guy, but uh, oh man, I'm blanking on his name. But we, Neil, I was, you talk uh, Neil. Uh, Big black guy. Yeah. Uh, I forget, too. Man, Neil how? Dawson? It, uh, Shit. I know you're talking. I know. You're kill me. <laughs> me, you... too. Sorry, bro. Yeah. I, sorry, man. <laughs> yeah, I was training with Neil. Blanking. I think, uh, I'm blanking, too. But It was, was a while back. It was like three years ago. At least. Three, three or four, four years, years ago. Him, but... Pat Cummings, Ishii, All those Tito, guys Chael. There. There's like a crew there, man. And so I was thinking, this is the best spot to be. If I'm in L.A., this is where I have to be to get my wrestling in. And so I was like, you know what? I'm going to make the commitment. Two-hour fucking drive up Did you drive him from where? I'm driving from the valley, man. So I'm driving all the way up there. It was, it was torture, man. Because two hours there, you train for two hours, and then a two-hour drive back. By the time you get home, you can't even fucking walk. Your body's so being so cramped up. in that car, and exactly. you're driving what? Yeah, you're driving what kind of car? Oh, you? at the time, Prius. Yeah, the, a Prius. Exactly. <laughs> Couple we, one we, two Prius brothers. I had a Prius about too, this, man. Yeah, it was it was the vessel, man. It was like, what's the cheapest way, most efficient way I can get to and from where I have to go every day? Got the Prius. Drove that thing into the ground, and uh, it got me to and from. But then I found Kenny Johnson over at Black House, which was much closer. He's Still amazing. an hour, hour and a half drive for me. But I is do it that... hour and a half to Black House? Well, hour, hour Depends in traffic, time. a little oh, over, fuck, yeah, bro. from where I'm coming from. That's a so, beast, um, man. But but I've been doing the hour drive there and back uh, three days a week to Black House for three years now. And, so you're um, doing what are you I'm doing at Black House? Exactly. You're doing wrestling with Kenny Johnson. Who shout out Kenny Johnson. I think I feel like people know amazing coach, amazing uh, wrestling coach. Mm-hmm. Just uh, I mean, one of my favorite people in the business. Yeah, he he he's he's a he's a savage man. He's 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 cra- he's a crazy guy. He's like in his mid forties, and he still goes hard with us every day. He goes live with us every day. I've seen him doing break and, UFC dudes. Yeah, and and the guy he doesn't eat breakfast. He comes and wrestles with these twenty one year olds for two hours. He gets done. He eats Kit Kats and drinks a Coke. Like the guy has the worst. <laughs> I like him more. <laughs> do, do not take advice from him when it comes to dieting. <laughs> like Kat he's got Coke. the worst diet. And, and monster he's, though. He's a monster. He does it. And like he, like last last year alone, he got. I remember he got hit on his motorcycle. He broke his foot. And and then he got kneed in the face and had like twelve stitches and he was still wrestling with the fucking cast on his foot and stitches in his face and had duct tape around his head like he's a monster bro he just keeps going and going but but his style of wrestling man has evolved my game because he knows man like the um I think what was going on I rain awesome wrestling but for me I was still green in wrestling so they were showing me like the number two, three, and four variations when I'm like, I don't even know the one. I don't even know the first thing I well, should be doing. Well, because think about that the, when you came in there, most of those guys have this crazy wrestling pedigree. Absolutely. So you got Mark Munoz, Oklahoma State, Pat Cummings, All-American Penn State. Uh, you had uh, Joe Warren in there. You had Ishii, Olympic-level judo mm-hmm. guy who knows wrestling. You had this makeup. Tony, uh, Tony Ferguson, Ferguson was in there for a while. Exactly. Yeah, so you have this Jake Ellenberger who knows wrestling. Mm-hmm. So they... and. Mark was like running the class. They had Ryan Parsons, who, mm-hmm. uh, you know, uh, Dan Henderson, Chael Sonnen's coach, my coach. So everyone has this high level of wrestling. So they didn't stop to go, 
Hey, are you good? With, <laughs> are you with us? Are you right? good with hand placement here? It's like, huh? Yeah. You fucking better because we don't have time to do that. Yeah. You know. So I, I hear you. I think a lot of guys struggle with. It that wasn't way. from my, their, their their wrestling was great. It just wasn't from my style because I'm predominantly a striker and my le- wrestling was on that level. Going over to Kenny at Black House was much better because he's been working. He got in. He when he came to Black House, he's working with like with um, Anderson Silva and Leota Machida, so he knows the game plan is not to take guys down all day and, and and single leg and double leg. It's to not go to the mat. Yes. And if I go to the mat, to get the fuck up yes. and get off the cage and get back in a predominantly striking range. So that's how he taught us. And now that we're at that point where I know get the fuck off the ground, now we're working the singles and the doubles and everything. We've been doing it for three years now, and it's a lot of progress. But, it, what, yeah, what I'm getting at is it's just a, it's, it's more effective – uh, striking style wrestling. If you want to predominantly be a striker and you want to know how to get up or take guys down at the last 30 seconds, uh, the bolt wrestling style is is better because you're not going over too much tedious like details that you might not use if you're if you want to be punching people in the face most of the round. Yeah, he Kenny Johnson's very good at the meat and potatoes as far exactly, as exactly exactly not getting too intricate with the takedowns and it's not a wrestling match. It's MMA, so his cage work is really good. He breaks yeah. it down. Uh, him and Lisa Bowen are probably the two best I know as far as wrestling for MMA, mm. and then. The the easy sell on, on Kenny Johnson, if there's fighters listening, like, gosh, should I go to Black House? Look at Leona Machida. Try taking that motherfucker down. Yeah. Where do you think he got it from? It's He's a, tough, man. It's a nightmare. I'd I eat, mean, he had a super wrestling I'd eat, I'd, eat, <laughs> I'd eat knees and fuck. I mean, yeah. it was exhausting trying to get, get that guy down. Yeah. So you're at Black House for striking wrestling, and then where else do you go? And then Saxon Muay Thai, man. I do all my striking at Saxon Muay Thai in the Valley. It's um, I moved right near it. It's it's in Reseda, California, and... um. It's good, man. Like I, I came up at this gym called Legends, and uh, in Hollywood, Legends in Hollywood, With, yeah. Uh, Randy Couture and who else owned it? Randy Couture and um, Boz Rutten, kind right. of were like the names, but they weren't really there. It was Chris Riley. He was the original owner. It was Bomb Squad back in the day, and it was like the only Muay Thai MMA gym in LA at the time. And that's where I started. That's where Eddie Bravo, after he won, uh, after Abu he Dhabi? beat Hoyle, oh, yeah, yeah, he won Abu Dhabi. He said, "I'm gonna go open a gym, man. I'm famous." You know, what I'm saying he came to Bomb Squad. And just was teaching in the Muay Thai gym, renting space kind of thing. And then from there, it turned into Legends and got kind of big. And at the time, that's when all the gyms were coming out, Randy Couture, uh, Shun Couture, and all these other gyms. So did, you, so did you start training with Eddie even there? I started months later, Dabbling bro. It? I used to look at Eddie, and I would be like, ah, why do you guys roll around on the ground, dude? That's just nasty. Really? <laughs> you know really? I mean? Like, that's I, not your thing? It wasn't my thing. I was fighting Muay Thai. I fought Muay Thai for like two years. And um, How many fights in Muay Thai? Ten. Ten amateur fights. So went ten and zero in Muay Thai, and then finally Did Eddie you, was, and you made seventy dollars. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> if that, I think I paid. I think my, you paid my medicals. I was probably in the negative. Yeah, your your payoff was stitches <laughs> and a fucking glass of. Gatorade. That's it, man. There was no money in it, and I was seeing Eddie at the time. The Ultimate Fighter was big and stuff, but Eddie kind of. I think it went up to him, and I was like, "Man, I'm a fighter. I want to do this. Can I train for free?" You know, the worst question in the world that a a a, a, ma- a, a teacher wants to True. hear. But he was cool. You know how it is, man. He's like, yeah, man, as long as you come every day, don't just come once a week. You're not going to progress. If you come four times a week, you're going to get good, man. You're an athlete. And I just started working with Eddie and um, nonstop, man, and I got my brown belt through him. But like I said, now he's downtown. It's a little bit further from me, man. He's got the 10th Planet HQ, and they're kicking ass over there, man. I yeah, mean, they've got, like, it. they've got like 100 warm-ups that are like, there's like 15 moves in each warm-up. And it's like, if you don't know the fucking warm-up, if you haven't studied it, you go in there and you're fucking lost, dude. Yes. It's so much shit going on. I can't keep up with it. But yeah, it's just a lot of a lot of driving for me. So a lot of times I'll do most of my stuff. If I'm not at if I'm not at um Black House, I'm over at Saxon Muay Thai working with uh, Julio Tron. After Legends closed, I went over there and and we hit it off good, man. And and we've had uh, good success over the last couple and, of years. And at Black House, you guys you're working who's who's all there? Like who's your training partners? Uh I mean it's it's James Mutasri. Uh he fought on the card as well with me that He's weekend. He's a fun fighter to watch. Ke- yeah, Kevin Casey, who is now in Bellator. Is he with Bellator? UFC released him, huh? They released him, man. They released him. He's fighting on that Bellator card. Um in, in, in uh, January twenty first, Tito is it the Tito versus yeah, yes. exactly there's January twenty first. That's a good card, man. There's a lot Great of card. a lot of good regional guys on that card. A lot of good like California. Kevin guys. Casey is a uh, uh, Hicks and Gracie black belt. Yep, uh, has competed in Metamorphs. You guys see him in uh He's competed in all sorts of IBJ, FFF, whatever the hell it is. Um, and he's a rapper. And he looks tough. He does, and he's married <laughs> to Muhammad Ali's uh, and, daughter. Very good point, man. But yeah, and he's the nice guy in the world. Although he looks like a straight 
killer. Once you break through the barrier, because yeah, he'll look like he's gonna stab yes. you in the neck for a when while. You meet him for e- for a while. I was like, oh my god, he's mean as shit. I was like super intimidate him, and we'd roll, and you know, we we'd be in geese, and he has his black belt on my brown belt, yeah, and he would just hold position, just. just- Stare at me in the yeah. eye, and I'm like, <laughs> "Hey, bro, we're here for 12 minutes. Get off of me!" But he's so strong. I he thought can't. we weren't cool for the longest time. Me too. For like a year, I was like, "Are we cool?" Because I can't tell the way he looks at me. I don't know if he wants to kill me or if he's sizing me up or what. And then he's the nicest guy in the world. And then I broke down the barrier, yes. and all of a sudden he's I like, "I love that guy." Yeah. And when it, you see him, tell him I said, boys. "What's up, man?" I'm talking. I him will. Well. No, we used to train cool. every Saturday morning. It was all black belt class. It was. Leo Machida, Kevin Casey, Crone, Henner, Hero. You guys are still doing that, you said? Uh, or you were we haven't done day. it a while. We, we're, we're doing it like a year ago. Yeah, it was yeah. just at 7 a.m. Black Belt. Good and it group was just of guys, man. Mo- I mean, it was monsters. And who runs shop on that one? Who is Henner. the top dog? Henner? Uh, Henner. Well, Crone's a monster, too. All those yeah. guys are mo- But uh, Henner, if Hiron decides he wants to roll, Hiron tr- teaches so much. But if Hiron's on, he's uh, the, the uh, complete nightmare. And if, and if it's all key and heat on roll, is it just flip or flop? Like I think in, so, flip yeah. flop. But uh, God, that's a good question. Yeah, they're monsters. I've never rolled with them, man. I hear great things about all of them, but I've never rolled with any of them. I just, I mean, I, when, when he competed against and met Morris Barnett. Um, Exactly. Who the fuck competes against Barnett? Well, t- it, it, see, and I don't know if a lot of people realize this is so. Halleck, who's his brother, the, yeah. who's probably the worst businessman ever to get involved <laughs> yeah. with promotional shit yeah. ever. I like Halleck. That's not your lane. Yeah, obviously. So uh, remember, the main event falls out. Mm-hmm. So they need someone to compete against Barnett. Uh, Hiron is an investor in Meta Morris, so he has money into it. They need mm-hmm. to save that main event. Huron really not ready for that. You know, granted he's a wizard on the ground, but Josh Barnett catch wrestling. Yeah. And I saw him like, Jesus, man. But you know, leg bat signal and, and yeah, leg lock master, <laughs> yeah. ripping the ankles off and shit. So I think that's where that came into play. Yeah. So people are like, Oh, Huron, you know, I thought he was the best. I'm like, he, he is. It's just that's a weird situation. But even if yeah, and, and like Barnett's three hundred pounds better. <laughs> yeah, he's got the size, man. It's like even if both guys were equally as skilled or or whatever. It's like if we both get each other in a leg lock and you've got 50 pounds of muscle, you, you got win. Some torque. You, you win. got some torque. Yeah. Um, man. Yeah. I, th- I think you're doing all the right things, man. I think it's only a matter of time. I think 2017 for you is, is the year of Alan Joban. I said this. I, I said so. this last year about Tony Ferguson. I'm usually right on this stuff. I went 2016 is the one, year of Tony Ferguson. Killing it, And granted, right? he won, whatever, four in a row, five in a row. But you can just see these kind of patterns where – Like seven in a row. Yeah, it just takes a yeah. while for, for the people to catch on. But with you, it's an easy fucking sell. Um, UFC 207, you, you, I'll, I have to do my predictions next week on the big round breakdown. But you, any predictions? You want to just do the main card? Yeah, you talking about next weekend? Yes. The one, so it's on Ronda Friday. Rousey. And so you got, uh, we can bring it up for you. Bring so, it up. Let's so see. We'll, we'll start with Dillashaw Let's Lineker. Okay. I'm not gonna give my opinions. I just want to hear yours. I gotta save mine for next week, but All I want right. to get your take on this because you're obviously a wizard of the game. I, I'm gonna go with Dillashaw, man. I think his, his ability to move and and land the com- the combos is gonna outtake John Lineker. But I gotta say, man, you know what they were saying? Could John Lineker land on John Dotson, who's a freaking who, the fastest well, guy, yes. yeah, who's a, the fastest guy and most athletic guy in the division, and he landed on him, man, and he kept up with him. But I got to go with Dillashaw. He's got that experience level, man, and he's got a more diverse striking game. Um, the the kicks and the combinations that they're doing at uh at uh with Dwayne is has been paying off. So I'm gonna go with him on this one. I agree. You know, John's a, a uh, you know, this is a weird comparison. Obviously, John Lineker's way more uh, talented and experienced, but mm. John Lineker reminds me of kind of Mike Perry, this small with more talent because he just we know what he's gonna do. He's the Terminator. He has hands of stone, and he's just going to march forward no matter what you do. That's yeah, absolutely you, right. How easy is that right. to game plan for? And I'm not saying he's easy to beat. Mm-hmm. I'm just saying if you come with the right game plan, it's way easier to do than, say, you're fighting a guy like TJ Dillashaw or Dominic Cruz who you're like, what the fuck? I wouldn't like, be I can't surprised get a beat. if they try to implement the same game plan as me because Correct. after my fight, uh, DwayneBain.com, uh, whatever, they reposted my highlight reel and gave me some praise on it, which is all some of them. And it's probably because they're studying the same stuff. They're like, keep the distance, keep the footwork, keep them at bay, the pick kicks, your shots. You're missing, and so they saw me do it, and they were like, that's exactly what we're going to do next week. Don't get your back. Whenever your back touched the cage, I'm like, Alan, get the fuck get the, exactly. out, son, because he's just like... 
Yes. It's almost yeah. like a heat seeking missile. It's going do, 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 yeah. do, do. as soon as you hit that, boom. And but you're out. You're yeah. out. I agree. Uh, similar game plan. Uh, all right. And then you got Verdun versus Kane. Man. Shit. I mean, it's a doozy, right? That's this, this a doozy. Because uh... remember, uh, last time they fought, it was in Mexico City. Uh, Kane said he, he didn't get used to the altitude. Verdun yeah. obviously beat the brakes off of him. He did, and and Verdum showed me it's crazy. Like he showed such a chin in that fight, but then he got knocked out pretty badly. Stipe. And the next, uh, yeah, Stipe put him to sleep. With that man, I'm gonna go with Kane, bro. He's just such a bad man, and they're not fighting at altitude this time. Um, hopefully, he is healthy. That's the only thing, man. I feel I like know, Kane is Kane. always nursing some kind of bad injury. Um, he should be such a smarter fighter being a former champion, but I'm going to go with Kane on this one. I, I feel like Fabricio hasn't looked um, like the Fabricio we used to see him when he fought Kane, when he fought Mark Hunt. I don't know what's going on there. The thing that scares me is Kane uh, with the Fighters Association uh, said, uh, you know, I, I do need a, I think he said a neck surgery or a back surgery. Oh, he, goes, he mentioned that. He goes, but he I it. want this fight so bad, I'm going to wait to do it after. I'm like, well, that's Oh, good. shit. Okay. Well, so, now we know. Yeah. We'll with see. With that said, I'm still going to go with it because I agree. I don't think Fabricio has looked as strong and athletic uh, or just, just the beast that he was. Um, but like you said, the, the chin going's a little scary for me. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and people Kane forget always, how well King can box. Man, it's like. It's almost like he doesn't have power sometimes because he lands so many at such a big man. It's the but he's Diaz got, factor, just a pop up, pop up, pop up, pop up. Exactly, he's not going zero to a hundred on every shot. He said, "I'm going to throw every shot at eighty percent. That way, I get five of them, and that's why he lands so many." Correct. Uh, co-main event. Whoa, this Cruz is, Garbrandt, this son. Is, did you see some of that trash talk? Um, Dude, I'm glad fight? you brought it up, <laughs> bro. I'm glad you brought it up. <laughs> that How shit. about hey? Can you tell like this? Part of me was like. Oh man, these guys really need help with the trash talk. But then part of me was like, this is so unfiltered. I'm kind of digging it. Because yeah. Cody Garbrandt, and I was talking to Lance Palmer and some of the Alpha mm-hmm. uh, male boys in uh, Austin when I was doing this uh, invitational there with your boy Eddie Bravo. Yeah, yeah. And Lance Palmer is like, dude, Cody Garbrandt's a pit bull. Yeah. He's like, he's so fucking competitive. Like, Fight week, if he sees someone from another camp, he wants to fight him. So <laughs> when 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 he goes, you better hope I don't see you backstage, and Dominic's yeah. like, oh, whatever. Uh-huh. No, no, no. He's dead <laughs> he serious. serious. So I like it because it's real. Like yeah, There's so exactly. much animosity there. And and how about Dominic's like, dude, be professional. I'll let you talk. Let me talk. And Cody's like, right. fuck that. And then when he, said, when he made the eight. remark about like buying his home yes. uh, from all the victories over his, his, yes. uh, his teammates – I thought that was that was pretty. That was yeah. He goes, "What are you talking about?" He goes, "I beat everyone from your gym. I bought a house because I beat all your guys." Yeah, that was, I was kind of rolling. amazing, man. And then he goes, "Then when he goes, you look like Pee Wee Herman with that tie." I was like, "Oh my oh, god!" Yeah, they were, they, 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 you could you could just see the the the, the, the discomfort. They, they, they hate each other, man. And but that's what that's what real fans they they pick up on that man. They could smell a fake from a mile away. You know, 100%. these guys genuinely have dislike for one another. Correct. Um, they're not trying. Uh, on this one, though, Dominic Cruz versus Cody Garbrandt, man, I'm going to stay with the champ, dude, just because although I think Dominic Cruz is going to be too hard to hit, Cody Garbrandt, he plants his feet because he has, he has power, so he has to plant his feet, which would be harder to hit him a moving target like Dominic Cruz. But I think Cody Garbrandt probably is the most uh, athletic and explosive power hit puncher that that. Uh, Dominic Cruz is gone against. That's you know, fair. he's not a guy that like is stationary throwing a big punch. He's exploding forward, like you said, like a heat seeking missile, man. He finds his targets. So he could catch the chin, man. But Dominic Cruz just has so much experience. And this is the other thing. His time as an analyst uh, on Fox or whatever he does, you know, he's always doing this stuff. He breaks down his fights and he sees stuff from another angle. You know, he, he takes a step back and he breaks down his fights and he analyzes what should I do? How would I beat myself? What would you do to beat me? And he looks at it, and he's gonna he's gonna implement that game plan because he's a smart fighter. You can tell he overanalyzes almost everything, and I think he's overanalyzed this fight so much that he's gonna create the perfect game plan and stick to it. I I prove me wrong. Yeah, you know, yeah, I, I, th- this is my only. Oh, thing. you can't pick. You can't pick. So I won't pick yeah. right now, but I, I just to play devil's advocate here. Yeah. Um, I I like the fight for Cody Garbrandt. I think Dominic Cruz is the smartest fighter in the game. Mm-hmm. He's the most c- cerebral fighter, to your point. Agreed. Yeah. Uh, but he is working that UFC Tonight desk and the UFC fights all the time. To my point, what I was talking before, where it's guys, a distraction. it's a dis- it's a huge distraction. Man, yeah. And Dominic Cruz doesn't fight that much. Mm-hmm. Cody Garbrandt fights nonstop. 
Cody, my issue for him in this fight is that shit talking, it's so personal and he's so passionate and he, he's this little ball of hate and it comes out in both his left <laughs> and right ball hands, right? It comes it. out in his left and right hand and yeah. he's the Chuck Liddell of the division where if he touches you, you're going to sleep. I'm talking prime Chuck Liddell. Mm-hmm. People forget too, Cody Garbrandt, uh, was uh, undefeated as a high school wrestler, had offers to go Division One. was like, fuck this noise. College isn't for me. I'm just going to go fight professionally and start boxing. So he has the wrestling pedigree too. I but, Dom, but Dominic Cruz, the, the, the edge in that. Better wrestler. Better yes, wrestler. Better wrestler. Sure, yeah. But Dominic Cruz has no knockout power. He's not yeah. going to knock a guy like Cody Garbrandt out. Um, we I don't know too much about Cody's grappling as far as submission, jujitsu stuff mm-hmm. like that. So that's probably the edge. Of the I don't think it's Cruz. instinctual. Like I think if he gets you on the ground, he just wants to smash you. Yes. He's not thinking like hug you. He, he yeah. goes he goes the Hulk smash kind yeah. of uh, mode. Uh, the the huge X factor here is can Dominic Cruz for twenty five minutes avoid that right hand of Cody Garbrandt? Yeah, because Dominic Cruz could land fifty shots. Cody needs one. Mm-hmm. In 25 minutes, he needs one small opportunity to take Dominic Cruz's head off. I don't know if he can avoid it. This is the other X factor. Can Cody Garbrandt compete with Dominic Cruz for 25 minutes? That's what was, that was what I was Cody Garbrandt's say. never gone past what the third round. Right, he's probably been to the, the has he even been to a decision? If so, maybe once or so. Um, 25 minutes, man, and then. Well, but remember, it's not 25 minutes against a guy like. Um, Lineker or, you know, a guy who's marching forward and you know what to deal with. It's 25 fighter, minutes yeah. of Dominic Cruz. Yeah. Footwork. On the bike. Angles. Kicks. Getting frustrated. Wrestling. Yeah. Has he... So he's never been decision. Uh, oh, decision. Oh, one decision. Henry Briones. Three rounds. Three rounds. Oh, and then one But he, ha- round he hasn't knockout. been out of the first round in... Uh, he hasn't been out of the first round this year. He's undefeated, and obviously he's undefeated. But, but you learn a lot in the, in, the, in those five round. That's fights, where you learn man. the most. I think I think you learn the most out of decisions, and you know you don't learn too much. Like his last fight against uh, uh, Mizugaki, mm-hmm. knocking him out in forty eight seconds. You learn nothing. It, lo- it looks <laughs> yeah. great. Yeah, you have no idea if you did the right diet, if you did the right training camp, if you made the right moves. It, you know, you have no idea. Did the hyperbolic chamber work? I don't fucking know. I knocked. I threw one punch and knocked him out. I used to. I loved winning that fast to get out of there, but I was kind of yeah. like, Ugh. the thing that you learn in these in these five round fights, or even just going to decision three round fights, is kind of like you know in jujitsu they say there's like the hidden jujitsu. You can't really teach it, but yes. it's just knowing when to apply pressure and this and that. In MMA, and you probably. Hopefully you kind of know what I'm talking about. Like I find in fights that like you learn that like how to the momentum. There's like the hidden MMA fighting is like there's a momentum thing where like even little subtle things like during my fight, Mike kicked me in the leg and I looked at him and I kind of nodded and he kicked me again and I nodded and then I came back and I punched him in his face. And it wasn't like I knocked him out or it wasn't like a big thing. But in his heart, he's like, shit, this guy just punked me out twice and then he punched me in my face. Now the momentum's in my favor. And that subtle thing is little things that you learn from going three rounds, from but taking but, momentum from people. And, and to your point, momentum's everything. Because in your fight against Mike Perry, he came out with, he's undefeated. He's knocked everyone out. He's, he thinks he's invisible. He's like, dude, I mm-hmm. can't be touched. Yeah. He comes out and right off the bat, you douche. And he goes, <laughs> you can see on his face, he goes, oh, <laughs> yeah, that one's the happen. fuck? Oh, this is fighting. <laughs> That's Alan Joban. Yeah. You're in a fight now. And you can tell the momentum from the very get-go was not on his side. Because mm-hmm. it was that momentum shift right and he's away. he's a, a heavily uh, momentum fighter. He's which is huge. He's and everybody. Which yeah. is, and now, and this leads me right into the main event, mm-hmm. Ronda Rousey. Insanely momentum fighter. Mm-hmm. Where mm-hmm. she comes out, and it's this fucking tidal wave. From the get-go, and yeah. boy, if you don't fucking deal with it, you're going to get ate the fuck up. But if you do deal with it, and, but if you're a so, tough girl, like so is Amanda Nunes. Though. Yeah, exactly. Remember Amanda Nunes. Whenever it goes, usually past the second round, she starts to t- to really, really get exhausted. Her technique goes out the window. I, you look at her losses. If you can click on her, you look, she lost to Cat Zingano. Lost. Remember, got out grappled. Yes. Got kind of beat up. And she's uh, black belt on the ground. Yeah, that that you know, a lot of people say when you look at Nunes, she's tough as hell. Um, she hits pretty hard and she's a black belt on the ground and those are kind of her main assets and um, she is definitely probably the the best girl in the division aside from Ronda Rousey in my eyes only because I say this every time but it's just the only thing I can go by is when Ronda was a champion everybody said 
you know what, the division's weak and this and that. She doesn't have any real competition. And then and Ronda was dominating. And then Ronda Rousey goes away. And all of a sudden, the belt's changing hands. And the division's so competitive. And it just showed how dominant Ronda Rousey really was. And I think she's going to come back. And it was just a bad matchup, too. Her against Holly Holm. You're going against Holly. She was going against MMA strikers. They were good strikers, but they were MMA strikers. It's a little bit more predictable. Like, you mm-hmm. know it's coming. It's going to be a 1-2 or a 2-3 type stuff, for an example. But... Against Holly Holm, she's got 50-plus boxing and kickboxing fights. She knows world the class. subtle things. that World-class striker. So you put her against Holly uh, against Ronda Rousey, and all of a sudden, Ronda Rousey looked just like it was basic striking. She and she made her look amateur in her striking. And all these funny memes that are popping up about how she throws punches. But people forgot the fact how dominant she was and how much of a true killer she really is when she's in there just because she had the wrong matchup at the wrong time. But I got to go with Ronda Rousey, man. I mean, Nunes could prove me wrong, but um, Ronda Rousey just was so dominant, bro. I can't go against her when she's coming back. Uh, in it, uh, it's There's there's X, X factors in, in these three main fights. For Ronda, it's does she want it? Yeah, where's the head she's, at? She's exactly, been yeah. shooting movies like a motherfucker. She's had mm. this long layoff. It's alarming to me when a champ who's, you know, supposedly the best women's fighter of all time takes this long of a layoff. Because mm-hmm. a guy like the Diaz brothers, a guy like Anderson Silva, a guy like yourself, a guy like uh, Conor McGregor, as soon as Conor lost, he wanted right back. I want to fight him right now. We didn't hear that from Ronda. Yeah. So to me, and with her management being WME for years and they need a star, how bad does she want it? Now, if Ronda wants to be in there and she feels like her back's against the wall, she feels like everyone's counter out, and she can have those chips on her shoulder, which makes Ronda Ronda, she's going to murk Amanda <laughs> uh, Nunes. Yeah. She really she will outclass her. If you think uh, Amanda Nunes is a black belt on the ground, Ronda will fucking roll her up like an egg roll. She will destroy her on the ground. It's uh, not even close. She will <laughs> roll her up roll. like like a fucking <laughs> hand roll. Like a fucking a s- spicy tuna California she will, roll. Man. She's gonna it's not even close on the ground. And she's going to take the arm home with her. It, that's, it, it, that's a big... that, But, <laughs> brother, that's a big if. Now, yeah. if Ron is in there, and this is what... This is what... There's, there's signs. There's signs because... She does that. That remember at uh, UFC Madison Square Garden, Conor McGregor uh, versus Eddie Alvarez. They bring her out. And she doesn't mm-hmm. get that many cheers. She got yeah. a lot of boos. She had to be consoled in the back. Oh really? Yeah. She had, Afterward in the in back, the back she they're like, "Don't worry, it's it. okay." And Dana goes, "She she has a perfect. He's an enabler. She mm-hmm. had a perfect good reason why she didn't do that interview. Mm-hmm. Uh, I told her not to. She had to do a thing." Uh, so it, to me, where's her psyche at? Because mm-hmm. what made Ronda so great, granted she had all the judo background and she has this tenacity, even though she has a terrible training camp, let's be real. Mm-hmm. But what makes her great <laughs> is she has this, she just has this tenacity that no girl could match. She's the top dog, yeah. If you fuck with, if she doesn't have that, Amanda Nunes is going to knock her lights out, man. You said it, man. It's we a huge X factor. momentum and you said it, you could see... When she in it, when when Ronda Rousey got her momentum going and she was killing all these girls, Mike Tyson effect, son. She had it, and then when she, and all of a sudden Ronda Ron, Ronda Rousey became like the zinger, like the one liner. She kept coming up with all these do nothing bitch things because she was so confident. She's like, whatever I say is fucking golden. <laughs> She and said, do, he, do nothing, bitch, then he got to <laughs> kicked in the face. She's like, I, I want to do be a do nothing, bitch. I want kids. I just want to chill. Like, it, it, that, she knocked that do nothing, bitch, out of her. She's like, oh, my God. I just want right. kids. And I, I need to. I need a house and shit. I'm not trying to fight <laughs> I anymore. I just need a man to take care of me. Like, God damn. <laughs> man, God, dog. Oh what happened God. to the badass? Yeah. So, so, so we'll, that's we'll the see. X factor, my w- man. Which, which one shows up? If the old Ronda shows up, and I'm not saying she has to be like the most confident girl in the world, but if she's performing at the level that she was, I think that Ronda takes out Nunez. If, if it's uh, a Ronda who's unsure of herself, man, we might have a good fight on our hands. Exactly, you have a good fight on your hands, and uh, with Amanda's uh, striking power, knockout power, that's a, a tough matchup. But and uh, put one because I said tough again. But um, <laughs> as far as uh, fighting style, Amanda coming forward is perfect for Ronda. The, this this whole fight is not a skill thing. It's mm-hmm. a, it, who who's who's mentally more prepared to deal, as you said, with the momentum shift mm-hmm. uh, coming off a loss for Ronda, uh, ring rust, this magnitude of a fight. Ronda won't even talk to the media, which I'll get into next week. She won't even talk to the media. She only did a commercial with, uh, or only did an interview with Ellen, who 
you know, we might as well have Skip Bayless talking about the UFC. Like Ellen freaking, <laughs> you know, Ellen blowing smoke up her ass because she doesn't know fighting. She's, yeah, everything's yeah. all good. And, you know, she's talking about suicide on there and crying. Mm. And, you know, Ellen's there to comfort. But you release the hounds on someone who knows fighting. They're going to grill you on what's going on, stuff like that. And she won't even come face to face with that. Mm-hmm. That's a whole nother issue. Yeah. That's a whole nother mental psyche type of thing that gives me a little bit of red flags. But I'll make my picks next week. But it's pretty obvious. I'll be, I'll them. be, yeah. I'm curious to hear them all, though, man. Well, brother, I, uh, I can't thank you enough for coming on. You're one of my faves. You know that. Thank you, man. And, yeah, uh, dope. I mean, if you need me in on that mean to, to package this deal to get you in the top fifteen and get you one of these huge fights, yeah. I'll help out some. I'll do what I can. And uh, I apologize for the way I'm dressed today. I look like the hamburger. Versace, well, don't judge me, man. Yeah, we're gonna fucking trying. Step it up next time I come on. If, if you need a plus model, I I can help. If you need a plus They're uh, making a comeback, these plus models, man. Especially be... the women, it's like it's weird. I saw this The plus model I chick. Saw, the hot, the hot, thick chick. She's hot as She's fuck. She's hot, bro. But there's all guys I, with. I smack. saw, yeah. yeah, for sure. I saw, <laughs> for sure. Sign me up. I saw a billboard of a chick who's just clearly obese, and it was like, "Beauty's in the eye of the beholder." I'm like, what? <laughs> no, we can't give that message. A model looks like um, this. A plus side model looks like this. And on that note, Alan Jovan, we love you here, man. Uh, yeah. I wish you the best. I think 2017 is your fucking year. Grab it by the horns, toss a Versace scarf on it, and fucking do your thing, brother. We're rooting for you, and uh, thanks for coming on, man. Looking forward to it, guys. Thanks. All right. We are back at it. I walked a very handsome, very talented Alan Joban to his car. Um, our studio is a bit of a beast to get out of. It's very few, man. We we talk, I, you know, I was talking about this with Alan. You know, as we do these big brown breakdowns, I I try to figure out what guys would be good to have on because you have to have a conversation with them. You know, I, I'm not too interested in you know how they got into the sport, blah blah blah. Put that in the memory bank, or put that in the <laughs> fucking twenty dollars. Ton of money. What do I owe? Thousand dollars a day. Like um, that's a weird. Um, it's a weird uh, habit I have. But um, Alan Joe Band's one of my favorites, man, and and I think. Uh, the future is super bright for that dude. And I was glad to have him on. And I, I think he's one of the, the guys who is going to re- be a great kind of commentator and analyst if uh, if they have him. Obviously, there's a, a ton of uh, UFC tonight guys, and it's tough to get in there. But he, he could do something with it if he wanted to down the road, I think. So that's why I want to have awesome. him on, too, because he speaks well. Obviously, he's a dime piece. He's on a win streak. Um, he's a complete package, man. So I'm, I'm proud of that dude. Let's do some uh, fan questions, man, and wrap this bad boy up. Actually, as you were walking that beautiful man. <laughs> that dime uh, piece out. Beautiful man outside, yeah. I, I did see something, and you might be interested in this. So I don't know how legit this report is, but it's saying that uh, Nate Diaz was offered an interim title fight with Khabib Nurmagomedov. He just got offered it? Apparently, this one just came out. I just saw it on BJPen.com. I feel like, of course, Nate would take that. What? Of course, this is a power move. So they're like, oh, Tony, well, if we're going to pay you, you this much, why wouldn't we just uh, pay Nate, who is a, a bigger draw, and we'll pr- probably pay him the same amount of money we're going to pay you. We get bigger numbers. So we're good, man. That, that, that And that's the thing. Remember, uh, before this was announced, I said, Tony Ferguson has bargain chips in his power. Mm-hmm. As far as a fighter, he's not a draw. So this is why... Connor doesn't want to fight Tony. Connor doesn't want to fight Khabib. They're just not, they're not big names. Amazing fighters. No, they're not marketable. So you can see why Connor's like, I'll wait, man. Now, Khabib fighting Nate Diaz, and Nate's one of the biggest stars in the sport and one of the bigger draws. It's a perfect matchup for Khabib as far as trying to get him name recognition, get a big name fight because Tony and Khabib fighting each other, that doesn't break. Anywhere near, even on free TV, the the numbers that Page versus Watterson did, not even not even remotely close. It's just it's just the nature of the sport. I'd much rather watch that fight ten times out of ten than Page versus Watterson. Doesn't matter. I don't own the UFC, so they obviously are thinking similar. And uh, you know, Tony Ferguson is asking for way too much money. The UFC just goes, "All right, cool. Someone call up Nate." Because we know he loves to fight. We know he loves money. And I'm sure Nate will take this fight. Damn. It's a fun fight. Yeah. Great fight. Sounds like a really fun fight. I won't break it down yet, but it's the...
perfect fight for a guy like Khabib who's trying to make a name for himself as far as in the public eye. Not the fight fans, we all know him. He's probably the best 155 on the planet, not named Conor McGregor. I wonder how true it is. Because uh, BJPenn.com, you know, <laughs> jumped the gun a little bit. I, 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 lo- I love BJPenn.com, but, you know, it's not exactly uh, MMAfighting.com or MMA Junkie, but. Yeah, that's why. Take it with It's not UFC salt. tonight, but it, it, I, it makes sense. <laughs> it 100% makes sense. Of course they're going to do that. You're talking about the Nate Diaz, who's the bigger draw. They can pay him what they're going to pay Tony and get more ratings. They need ratings. And, again, we talk about how it's the, the league of entertainment now. Tony versus Khabib is not what they want. It's just not. They would have made it already. They're dying to make fights. There's a reason why they didn't make it, and it's obviously because Tony wants more money, but it's also that's not a main event. It's a fight night at best, unfortunately, guys. Talent-wise, the best matchup of the year. I'd rather watch uh, Nurmagomedov versus Ferguson, but seeing this, it's like, shit, I would love to watch this. Me too. Tour. I'd love to watch that. <laughs> yeah. You know what's a bummer? The public goes, huh? Yeah. I'd rather watch the the shredded Zach Morris on PEDs <laughs> stage north cut versus Mickey Gall, who beat the uh, the, the the famous wrestler who who's a fighter. Isn't that, isn't that a beast? Doesn't that suck? All right, That's bro, nice. let's do some fan questions. Sounds good. Good breaking news, though, Chen. Cool. Thanks, dude. So Maddie Sun, Maddie Sun Young Jedi is asking, or as saying, you should grapple with John Jones. What do you think of that? Uh, no. <laughs> uh, can, I'll take no for three thousand, Alex. Um, Even just grapple. I, I have no desire. I jump into an all grappling camp right now. My life is just too good, man. I I, the, I don't have that fire in me to do that. Um, you know, we, we, I'm so busy with stand up. I have these other TV shows I'm doing and. Uh, you know, and I'm doing more fighting the kids, and this is what I love to do, man. Uh, I'm just in a different lane, and I, I have no desire to do that. I've been offered ridiculous amounts of money uh, to compete in these super fights, jujitsu matches, and it's not it's not even about money. And and even if it was, um, you know, it's it's almost on par or less than what I make now using my brain and creativity. So I'll pass. It's a hard pass. It's a strong no. What else you got? Strong no. All right. Ars Broca. Do you think there's any potential penalty coming Rogan's way for tweeting about the lack of coverage for Nunes or Nunes leading to two so leading into two oh seven? No, I, I think that's why we love Joe because he's always up front. He's not a corporate guy, he's not a shill. So I mean he's just pointing out I think what everyone was thinking. It's like, you know, it's the Ronda Rousey show and this goes back to the point and I'm beating a dead horse here, but um, you know, entertainment's what sells. Ronda Rousey's one of the big names. Amanda Nunes is selling seven pay-per-views if we market her. And they're all come from Brazil or people who migrated from Brazil to the U.S. Like, she's just not, a, she's not even close to a draw. She's not a top 50 draw in the UFC, even though she's a champion. Sucks, I know. Skilled, f- wonderful fighter. Not a draw, not a superstar. Um, so, that being said, um, what are you going to do to Joe? What are you going to do? I know. Go ahead and try doing something to him. Are you talking about the time when when they were when he said something about the Pope and the UFC was like, "Hey man, we're gonna have to suspend you." Joe was like, "Cool, I quit." Like, what? Wait, no, we got it. What do you mean suspend Joe Rogan? He need, he needs the UFC like I need another STD. He just he likes doing it. But the, the the guy prints money. Whatever he touches is gold. You know, he loves doing stand up. He loves doing the fight companions. Um, you know, I'm not speaking for Joe Rogan, but I would assume if they tried. If the new uh, dictatorship over at uh, the UFC tried punishing him, Mm. it'd be fun to watch. Oh, boy. I have an evil grin right now. (laughs) Be really fun to watch. Good luck with that. What else you got? All right. Hectron86 comments on the video of Chris Van Heerden outboxing McGregor. Ugh. Chris Van Heerden's my boy. I see him every day in the gym at Boxing Burn. Uh, you know, Connor was coming in to uh, box and burn to train. Um, and Chris Van Erden is a, a former world champion. He, he has a huge potential fight maybe with Algeria next or some of these other killers. That, that's not sign. Those are just rumors. And so, you know, Connor and Chris moved around. Connor's not going 100 percent. Neither, you know, and Chris going pretty hard. And, and that video got out. Um, 
which I think is a bad idea anyways. I told Tony you have to have no cameras uh, whenever a top prospect like that sparring. It, that's gym etiquette 101. Mm-hmm. So there's fans everywhere. They're filming it. You know, and Chris takes it to another level and posts it and, and made these comments on Instagram. I thought it was poor taste. Kind of breaks kind of the fighter's code. Um, you know, I haven't talked to Chris about this. I will. I'll probably see him today. I'm headed to the gym after this. Yeah, you know, as a fighter, you don't do that. And, and to capitalize on a, on a guy like Connor and his fame, I don't know. I don't, me, 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 I'm just being a little too dramatic here. It's poor taste. It's poor taste. You know, Connor, um, he, he he could spar with any number of world champion boxers in the world. And, you know, he kind of went out and uh, out of his way and asked you to work with him, posted the picture on social media for you. And for a boxer of Chris's level, um, you know, that goes a long ways. He needs all the notoriety he can get. You know, he's put his time in with the sport. He's a, a gentleman from South Africa. He's a great trainer. A little bit of stab on the back on Chris's point. I, I, I don't dig that, man. I, and, and I know just, it's, it's, you know, baseball has those secret rules that no one really talks about. So does fighting. That's kind of one of them, to be honest with you. So when I saw that. I'm just like, you're not getting any fans there. And now people are going, oh my God. You know what Floyd would do to Chris? And look what Chris did to uh, Connor. Well, I need you guys to think of a few things here. Connor's just messing around, moving around. Chris is moving around. They were uh, just playing, sparring before that. Uh, they were helping each other out with techniques, stuff like it before that. Like, you got to know the context. That wasn't a winner takes all. Let's see what Connor has. Let's see what Chris has. You know? So it, I, I don't like that. I don't, that, that, gives, that gives me a weird feeling. I love both those guys, I, and I see Chris all the time, and uh, I, I sp- obviously speak and think very highly of Connor, and uh, you guys know I'm kind of a fanboy of Connor, and uh, he's a buddy, and uh, poor taste, man. Poor taste. Gotcha. All right, Bortle33 is asking, Brennan, would you ever consider being a commentator for Bellator? Bring that shop, bring that shop style to Spike TV. Uh, I mean, I have some stuff in the works with Spike. You know, I just uh, shot a promo video for them with their Chael Tito fight. Uh, Spike camera crew was in here shooting for a bunch of their stuff for that lead up of the fight. We're in talks. Um, you know, I'm, I'm not going to Italy and doing, you know, these these Bellator cards, stuff like that. I'd, I'd be down. I, you know, I'm, I'm open to the idea. I, I, I get, you know, joy and... I've talked about this before. I, I kind of I didn't have this resentment against fighting, but I was just so involved and so it was so ingrained in me for all those years. And I got my break, you know, as far as uh, retiring and and getting into whatever you want to call this entertainment, comedy, podcasting. Um, I, I did a sold out show at the Laugh Factory last night. Awesome. I'm at the the Hollywood Improv tonight, and I'm at the Comedy Store and. I'm just in that world. I'm 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 in that man, and I love it. And I'm so fortunate, and so blessed, and I don't even know if I deserve it, but by God, I'll take it and run with it. And I, I was like, God, I, I, I want to talk more MMA now. Like I'm, I'm doing my thing over here. You know, I I still love the sport. I still love everything about. It. I still have strong opinions. I still have some uh, thoughts and insight on the game that you're not going to get from anyone else. And I would, and I have the platform to do it. I have my own studio now. Chin can, uh, you know, puts his two cents in, and you you help with the the events, and you know the game too. Why not? So, and I own all this. This is my shit. And you guys have made it the, one of the top five, you know, sports podcasts when I release these things in the world. So, I, I'm down to do Bellator stuff. I'd be down to do any MMA stuff, but. I'd rather put my time into this. I'm I'm down to any of that stuff, but you know, it, it come with a price, and and this this is this is what I do, and it allows me the freedom. Uh, if I want to do this today at two o'clock, if I want to do it Friday at seven in the morning, if I want to do it Saturday at six at night, I'd rather do that. And and it's my opinion. There's no producer in my ear. There's none of that stuff. And I'm an opinionated dude, and I don't agree a lot of the times with uh, a lot of people on certain things, and. That's why I have my own show. So, I'd be down. I'd, I'd be. It'd have to be the the, the right context, uh, other stuff. But, like I said, I, I get my fix for in MMA by doing these big brown breakdowns. Let's do one more. Awesome, cool. There's one, another one about Rogan. If Rogan leaves the UFC, would he still be able to do fight companions for the UFC? Uh, I'm sorry, for UFC fights, or would it somehow be illegal? By the way, this is from Dan NC. 
59. M D M M C D 59. For sure, make your name easier. I'm sorry, dude. For sure. For, hey, hey, Dan, for sure, make your Twitter handle or, or Instagram handle easier. Do you hate followers? Um, <laughs> just kidding, buddy. Thanks for the question. Um, no, it doesn't matter. If, um, if say, so, let, who does Dana White hate? If Bjorn wanted to do fight campaigns on the UFC, he could do it. Because you're not airing the fights. You're not calling UFC fight companion. You're not calling it, you know, uh, UFC fight companion with Joe Rogan, Brendan Schaub, Eddie Bravo, Brian Callen, uh, UFC. So there's no licensing. There's no trademark uh, infractions there. There's Anyone can do it. I could, I could do um, NFL uh, game companions. I'm not going to call it NFL game companions. Yeah. I call it... Denver versus Kansas City companion, and but I'm not airing the fight on YouTube. I'm not illegally streaming the fights. I'm not illegally streaming the the NFL or NBA games. But I can do anything around it. I could do it for a movie. I could whatever as long as they don't show it. So it those companions have nothing to do with uh, if the UFC allows to do it or not. It just happens to be the biggest show of all time, <laughs> fight related. I mean, it's not even close. It's crazy how big those things are. So um, I, I think Joe would do more of them. I, I really do. And, he, and he, when he was going through his whole contract stuff with UFC, he was like, dude, I love doing these. Like this, I think the same thing with me. Like you get your fix off this. Granted, we really don't talk a lot of fighting on those. Fun talk about awesome. octopus, conspiracies, yeah. um, girls, <laughs> drugs. I mean, comedy, politics, aging, TRT, uh, Uberim, dolphins, stingrays. So I don't know. But yeah, that that, that doesn't matter. It doesn't affect that at all. So good question, though. Uh, people do ask that a lot. Anything else, brother? That's it. All right, guys. Uh, if you are a fan of the show, uh, of this show or Firing the Kid, you guys know I suck at taking vacations. I'm going to take a three day vacation next week, but that doesn't mean there won't be a show. I will be doing a big round breakdown either Monday or Tuesday for my UFC 207 official picks. Uh, so that'd be a fun one, fun card to break down, big card, and that card is on Friday. So I won't leave you guys hanging next week. We might do an additional fight in the kid. Brian and I are trying to track down our schedules as well, like a Christmas special. Brian goes to Bora Bora um, with the fam. So uh, he's out to the third. But, yeah, uh, this was a fun one. Shout out to Alan Joe Band. Uh, I wish him nothing but the best. What was his boy's name? Oh, dude. Do you remember? I should've, yeah, I should have told you earlier. Josh Capo. Josh Capo. Josh Capo. Josh Capo. Listen, Alan meant to give you a shout out, and I told him I'd take care of it. Apparently, we look a, uh, alike. <laughs> um, Alan said you're the best looking dude he's ever seen, and then he said we look alike. Um, so I, apparently, there's only one spot left for Versace plus plus size models. So I feel like we need to battle out to the death. So um, shout out to that dude. What was his name again? Josh Capo. Josh Capo. Keep doing what you're doing, man. Keep uh, killing the game. And uh, appreciate you listening. Appreciate you being a fan for that long. Uh, keep keep it up with the uh, with the haircut and everything you're doing. Apparently, you're, you're killing it. So uh, if Alan Joban gives you the pass, I'll give you the pass, too. Thanks for listening. Uh, thank you guys for listening to the Big Brown Breakdown. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. I will see everyone next week. I love you guys.